Chapter 361, Fierce Battle, Jian Chen didn't hesitate to decline the offer, my apologies, but I am protecting this white tiger. As long as I, Jian Chen, am alive, I will not allow anyone to lay a hand on him. Jian Chen, why would you go through such trouble? A magical beast usually has an exceptionally slow mature rate. A class 6 magical beast could take at the very fastest 10 years or a hundred years at its slowest to mature. Then if we were to include the countless resources, it would be an extravagant cost. With your talent, it would take another ten or so years for you to become a saint ruler I'm sure, by then, you could tame another docile class 6 magical beast without having to go through the costs of raising one yourself while avoiding any trouble with our Moyan clan. The Heaven Saint Master clearly did not wish to be enemies with Jian Chen and was hoping that Jian Chen would take the initiative to give up. That was because every single king of mercenaries have always been a Heaven Saint Master at the very least, and a saint ruler for the vast majority, meaning that Jian Chen was someone they couldn't afford to offend later. I, Jian Chen, am not a man who goes back on his words. You might as well give up on those thoughts. I will take this cub away from anyone else. Jian Chen's eyes grew cold as he prepared to fight without fear of the Heaven Saint Master. The ancestor of the Moyan clan gave a small sigh as he spoke. Jian Chen, the class 6 cub is something my Moyan clan desires. If you wish to continue on with this charade, then you will be offending our Moyan clan. The fierce glow in Jian Chen's eyes grew colder and colder before they seemed to have intensified into a sharp amount of chi toward the elder. If you dare make a move, then consider your Moyan clan dead to me. There will be no compromise, I will annihilate your Moyan clan. With that, the ancestor's face grew startled for a moment before he too glared back at Jian Chen. Jian Chen. You aren't thinking about what you are saying. Although you are talented, but even with your strength, you do not have the qualifications to say such words to me. HMPH, if you don't believe me, then feel free to see for yourself. All you have to do is make a move, and your Moyan clan will be enemies with me until death. If you do not wish to see your Moyan clan come across any trouble, then take a step back. I, Jian Chen will naturally do nothing in that case. Jian Chen's stare was as sharp as his sword, and his words left room for no doubt. The Moyan clan's ancestor grew dark at the very thought of a tiny earth saint master threatening him. Despite being an extremely talented one, he was still not someone that he could consider an opponent. There was a clear divide between an earth saint master and a heaven saint master almost as different as the heavens and earth themselves. He had previously been polite with Jian Chen due to his fear of Jian Chen's talent and wished to be on good relations with him in hopes that they could one day be friends with a saint ruler. But with these threatening words, the ancestor could not have those thoughts any longer. He was a heaven saint master with an illustrious status. On the Tianyu on continent, saint rulers were existences that even earth saint masters would have no choice but to be extremely respectful to unlike Jian Chen who had decided to give no face toward a heaven saint master. Not only had Jian Chen's attitude failed to cower to the ancestor, but it had instead infuriated him. With a thunderous expression, he spoke. What what an audacious brat. A class 6 cub is something our Moyan clan needs. If you do not wish to hand it over, then I will personally come and retrieve it. With that, the ancestor reached out his hand with an frantic amount of energy bursting toward his arm. A giant yellow-colored sword appeared, symbolizing him as an earth attribute cultivator, before he swung it at Jian Chen. With a small whistling sound. The heavens' stolen fortune had increased his strength by threefold, giving him enough strength to outrival even a fifth cycle Earth Saint Master and contend against a sixth cycle Earth Saint Master. With an impressive aura, he flew at the ancestor with no fear at all. The light wind sword danced as the Earth Saint force was scattered apart by Jian Chen before reforming straight away. Without any further impediments, Jian Chen shot toward the ancestor and stabbed for the ancestor's throat with his sword. Snorting, the Moyan clan's ancestor raised his sleeved hands. In an instant, the energy around him flew gathered on the ground around him before condensing into a two-meter earthen pillar that flew at Jian Chen's head. Waving his light wind sword, 
Ji and Chen borrowed the power of the sword spirits and shredded apart the pillars like tofu before finally arriving at the ancestor's height. With another flash of silver light, the sword flew at the ancestor's throat once more. So you have some skill after all. The eyes of the ancestor flashed once more as the earth attributed saint weapon in his hand moved to block the sword. Ding! A crisp sound rang through the air as Jian Chin's light wind sword was parried. The sword did not stop there and with a short burst of strength, it disappeared into hundreds of mirror images that stabbed at the Moyan clan's ancestor. The ancestor grew serious at the speed of Jian Chen, this was a speed that even a heaven saint master would have to be cautious around. In a short moment, Ji and Chen's sword had already reached an inconceivable speed as it struck out dozens of times, forcing his opponent to be unable to retaliate. Soon after, Ji and Chen's figure had already dropped down from the air and landed back on the ground. The ancestor was growing quite unsightly by now as he looked down at his own saint weapon. On it, there were a few dozen tiny holes on it. His saint weapon to be damaged to such an extent caused him a tidal wave of shock, forcing him into disbelief. To have such strength like that is quite terrifying. The elder thought with some fear toward Jian Chen. Right after touching the ground, Jian Chen leaped into the air as he tried to fly at the still floating ancestor with his light wind sword. This time, the ancestor did not wait around to block and took the initiative to gather even more saint force to his saint weapon. With another way of his sword, a tremendous amount of earth attributed sword Qi shot toward Jian Chen as a way of attack. Since he was in midair, Jian Chen had nowhere to run and could only take the sword Qi head on. The sides collided resulting in a large bang as the shockwave sent Jian Chen careening into the ground with an equally loud boom. Wu Yu Yu Lu. Wu Yu Yu Lu. The tiger that had been wrapped around Jian Chen's chest had been shaken awake with a baleful cry as it began to move its four paws against Jian Chen's chest. Opening its eyes slowly to reveal the treasure-like pupils, it began to look at the outside world with a curious expression. In order to protect the tiger wrapped around his chest, Jian Chen had smashed into the ground with a miserably pale face. This strike from the Heaven Saint Master had taken a toll on him. Suddenly, a tremendous amount of pressure originating from the floating elder filled the air. The earth attributed saint weapon had already transformed into pure saint force and came down on Jian Chen ruthlessly. However, this strike from the Heaven Saint Master was one that Jian Chen was not willing to accept, dodging it with his illusionary flash. He swiftly blew past the strike. Bang! The heavens shook as dirt flew everywhere around the trembling earth. Where Jian Chen had one been, there was a five-meter crater that was several meters deep. A black figure appeared to the side. Jian Chen had been completely unaffected by the ancestor's show of strength. In an instant, the light wind sword flitted forward and struck out at every single place simultaneously with a speed so fast that the entire area was filled with its mirror images. What a fast sword! The ancestor thought to himself gravely. Jian Chen's sword was truly too fast, and with each collision from the swords, the ancestor's own weapon was slowly being riddled with even more holes that in turn caused damage to him. Although it didn't cause enough damage to him at the time. If the battle went on for any longer, then it would soon turn life-threatening and could even handicap him. A layer of saint force wrapped around the ancestor's body defensively. Although Jian Chen had his sword with the azure and violet sword Qi, the saint force would still be able to slow it down. Hurriedly blocking each strike from Jian Chen while retreating, the ancestor tried to widen the gap between him and Jian Chen. With an explosive shout. The sword in his hand burst into a dazzling show of earth saint force before immediately filling the entire area and pressing down on Jian Chen. This attack caused Jian Chen's body to feel incredibly heavy as if he was carrying a large mountain, making movement difficult. Jian Chen, you forced me to use my advanced earth tier battle skill, you should be proud. The Moyan clan ancestor didn't mince any words and immediately slashed down toward Jian Chen. 
Another gleam of light appeared in Jian Chen's eyes as he pushed the heavens' stolen fortune to the limit. The previously threefold increase had increased so that he could now beat most sixth cycle Earth Saint Masters and smashed his Li Twin Sword into the ancestor's own sword. A blast of energy wrecked havoc in the area as the surrounding environment was blown apart. The mud on the ground flew into the air and the valleys themselves began to shake so much that a fissure opened up on the ground. The Heaven Saint Master that was just using an Earth Deer battle skill had instantly been heavily damaged by Jian Chen. His face immediately grew pale as his body flew backward while a trail of blood left his lips. Wuo! Wu Yu Yu Yu! The tiger that was still wrapped around Jian Chen's chest began to cry out even more as his entire body felt pain from the shock wave. An intense killing intent entered the ancestor's eyes. The recent attack from Jian Chen had caused a flash of fear to enter the ancestor's face. Since he and Jian Chen were enemies now, the best method would be to kill him now before he matured any more. This, or else there would be danger for the Moyan clan in the future. Chapter 362, Inflicting Serious Damage to the Heaven Saint Master, Jian Chen. If you truly desire to annihilate my Moyan clan, then do not blame me for being merciless, for the sake of my clan, I must kill you. The ancestor spoke coldly as the Earth Saint weapon began to billow with even more sword chi than earlier before he struck out at Jian Chen. Although Jian Chen had already taken heavy damage, his fighting strength was still frightfully terrifying. Immediately shooting up from the ground, he dodged the strike of Sword Chi. Bang! The ancestor's Sword Chi strike was almost like an explosive bomb as it exploded right where Jian Chen was. As the ground exploded and sent dirt flying everywhere, the following grass and mud covered the skies. Within the dust, Jian Chen was like a bullet as he sped toward the ancestor, with his light twin sword emitting Sword Chi as well. The azure and violet sword chi on the blade was exceptionally eye-catching. The elder from the Moyan clan had a look of contempt. You cling to life like a praying mantis. However, you are only just an earth saint master and not an opponent against me. Resistance is futile. With that, the elder waved his sword as another wave of sword chi flew from his sword toward Jian Chen, gritting his teeth without a sound. Jian Chen's eyes grew as sharp as a sword before instantly disappearing away from view with his illusionary flash. As he dodged the sword chi from the ancestor, Jian Chen reappeared by his side and thrust his sword forward. With a cold sneer, the giant sword in the ancestor's hand transformed into a dazzling light of yellow before the energy surged from within, causing the space around the sword to distort. At the same time, Another large amount of pressure came toward Jian Chen and pressed down on him like a heavy stone. The ancestor was using his advanced earth tier battle skill once more. With his strength as a heaven saint master, there would be no need to spend any time to prepare for its usage, therefore it could be used almost instantly. Allow me to see just how strong your determination to live is. The ancestor's eyes grew dark as a fierce killing intent flooded them. In an instant. The Earth Attribute Saint weapon flashed for a moment before flying straight for Jian Chen like a bolt of lightning. At this current moment, there was only a single meter between Jian Chen and the Ancestor. Thanks to the severe damage from earlier and the pressure from the Ancestor, mobility was quite hard. Every step required an equally large amount of energy, and with the Ancestor striking at him, it was impossible for him to try and attack the Ancestor. There was a strange smile on Jian Chen's face before the light twin sword in his hand suddenly flew away from his hand and transformed into a sword that seemed as if it had gained a soul. Against all expectations, the sword had begun to fly through the air before striking for the heart of the Heaven Saint Master. PCH. Suddenly, there was an extreme change across the elder's face from the unavoidable blow. The light twin sword had managed to pierce straight through his heart and explode out from his back with a bloody mess. At the very same time Jian Chen's sword had pierced through the ancestor's heart, the giant sword had managed to stab into Jian Chen's chest as well. The energy within the sword had begun to wreak havoc within his intestines shaking his inner organs and causing significant damage to his entire body inner and outer. Spitting out a large mist of blood, Jian Chen's face grew unimaginably white. Meanwhile, 
the blood on his chest had already started to drip down onto the pure white fur of the tiger cub and stain it red. The sword spirits within Jian Chen's Danchen shook before beginning to emit an attractive force. Straight away, the energy that had been causing Jian Chen's body to take damage were immediately sucked in by sword spirits, preventing them from causing any more harm. The ancestor had received an incredibly serious wound now that his heart had been obliterated. There was also some chi left within his body from when the light wind sword had ran straight through him. Although he was a heaven saint master, his inner organs were weaker than Jian Chen's. In contrast, the energy he had left behind in Jian Chen's body was far stronger than the energy that Jian Chen had left within his. However, this was still the very first time he had sustained such a heavy injury that he could not take. Spitting out a large amount of blood, he looked at Jian Chen with a dark glare. It is no wonder you are the king of mercenaries of the last gathering of the mercenaries. To have such strength, I've underestimated you if you could force me to such a disastrous state. Even when you die, you should be proud of this fact. With that, the ancestor clenched tightly to the sword that was still in Jian Chen's chest. Just as he planned to cut Jian Chen in two, an ear-splitting sound could be heard from behind him, filling his face with shock. PCH. The throat of the ancestor was split apart as blood came rushing out of the new wound. The light wind sword had finally made its way back after piercing the elder's heart, since the elder was not prepared to defend against such an attack, it had worked. A look of horror flitted across his face as he gave up on his attempt to kill Jian Chen. Then, flying at full speed, he tried to run away from Jian Chen while reclaiming his sword. Whoosh! A loud ear piercing sound could be heard once more as the light wind sword seemingly stopped its backward momentum and flew at the Heaven Saint Master with a renewed speed. The light wind sword slashed across the elder's leg, and with a torrent of rain, the severed limbs of his legs could be seen falling down from the sky. The ancestor let out a pain-filled cry as he flew 500 meters into the air so that he was nothing more than a speck of dust. As he flew away, he could only look at his severed legs on the ground in abject horror and disbelief. Jian Chen was staring at the ancestor's tiny dot in the sky with a surprising amount of shock. A heaven saint master's vitality was indeed extremely strong if his light wind sword was able to pierce through both his heart and throat without him dying. This revelation of information was stunning, not only were heaven saint masters strong, but their tenacity was terrifying. It was unfortunate that the soul sword could only travel 200 meters away from Jian Chen, with the Moyan clan ancestor being 500 meters away, there was no way for his sword to travel that far. This was because after 200 meters, his control over the light wind sword would shrink, and once it reached the 300 meter mark, he would lose all control over it. The light wind sword returned to Jian Chen's hand as a ball of silver light. Despite his pale face and his serious wounds, Jian Chen did not want the elder to escape that easily. An azure and violet light escaped from his light wind sword before shooting out from Jian Chen's mental command. Floating high in the air, the ancestor could only look down on Jian Chen with a fearful expression. He knew that his current state was dreadful with there being a hole where his heart used to be. This alone was already nearly crippling, but then he now had another hole where his throat was. His body was badly mangled, but in the face of everything, he had not died yet. Seeing the azure and violet glows of light shoot for him, the ancestor could only hastily throw his body out of the way and try to dodge the blows. Then. Casting a poisonous glare at Jian Chen, he flew off. Right now he had two major injuries on high body. Although they would not kill him, they still required a hasty healing. If he remained here, he would fall prey to another one of Jian Chen's strange tricks and end up dead. Running away from Jian Chen would leave Jian Chen no options other than to look at him get farther and farther away. Now that the ancestor was gone. Ji and Chen could let out a sigh in relief. After today's battle, he could be sure that his strength was similar to that of a heaven saint master. If he had not the soul sword to make any unbreakable guard breakable, 
then he would have found it impossible to beat a heaven saint master. This type of expert wouldn't be as paranoid about the azure and violet sword chi since they weren't like earth saint masters. It was only when their saint weapons were to be damaged by it that they would worry. It seems that I must find a way to allow the sword spirits to heal as fast as I can. If I could only heal them enough, then my azure and violet sword chi would surely grow stronger. Jian Chen spoke as he tried to sit up painfully. Right now, the Azure and Violet Sword Chi weren't a major problem to any Heaven Saint Master, so he would need to find a way to heal the Sword Spirit's strengths. This way, not only would the Sword Spirits be stronger, but the amount of assistance he could receive would be higher too. The tiger cub that was wrapped around Jian Chen still could smell the dripping blood from Jian Chen and seemed to look as if it was hungry. Resting for a moment, Ji and Chen placed the cub down on the ground for a moment before sitting down and using the Radiant Saint Force to heal his wounds. Wu Yu Yu Yu. Wu -o. Just as the tiger cub left his spot on Ji and Chen's chest, he grew unhappy immediately. Starting to cry, his four paws began to scratch the ground before ultimately climbing up Ji and Chen's body with Herculean strength and lapped up his blood hungrily. Seeing the behavior of the tiger cub, Ji and Chen didn't know whether to laugh or cry before feeling a sharp pain in his chest. Taking off his blood-soaked clothes, Ji and Chen set the tiger on the ground lightly next to it to do as it pleased. This way, the white tiger cub wouldn't bother Ji and Chen and could lick and gnaw at his bloody clothes with vigor as if it enjoyed the taste and smell of it. Chapter 363, Inescapable Net, 1. After the Battle Ji and Chen continued to use the Radiant Saint Force to heal himself. However, since he had used a lot of his spirit to try and seal away the dark energy within Rum Guinness, he did not have enough power to completely recover from his own wounds in one go. After healing himself to a half state, Ji and Chen stopped the process and took the tiger cub in order to look for a cave to hide in and resumed the process of healing himself. While the ancestor of the Moyan clan had escaped with grave injuries, he still knew where Jian Chen was. Jian Chen didn't know when the elder would be back with reinforcements, so he had to quickly heal. As long as he had enough strength, he would be able to escape. If he didn't, then he wouldn't be able to run far. In the case that another Heaven Saint Master were to give chase, he would not be able to cope. Jian Chen spent the rest of the day trying to regain all of his strength before attempting to use the Radiant Saint Force to heal himself once more. Now that Jian Chen had more spirit than before, his ability to control the Radiant Saint Force was even better now. Despite the severity of his injuries, it only took him another hour to completely heal himself. After his wounds were fully healed, Ji and Chen didn't stop to rest. Immediately taking out a class 5 monster core, he began to recover the rest of his saint force. After using the heaven's stolen fortune to multiply his strength by threefold, the amount of saint force that he had used had been hefty. Right now his saint force was still not in tip-top shape and was slowly recovering from his exhausted state. Recovering the saint force was a slow process. It was only 10 hours later that Jian Chen's saint force had been fully recovered. Slowly standing up from the ground, Jian Chen changed into a new set of clothes from his space ring before taking the still sleeping white tiger out of the cave. It was well past the midnight hours and the poisonous fog around the valley was even more noticeable than before. Yet, it was also weaker in potency as well. This type of poison would pose no problem to an Earth Saint Master at all. Just past the foliage of the trees, Ji and Chen could clearly see the blanket of stars and the bright white moon hanging overhead, shining down on the lands. Ji and Chen was still carrying the sleeping white tiger as he looked around the area. After confirming that it was safe, he left from the area under the guise of the dark night. Jian Chen quickly flew through the forest at a rapid pace. He had already discovered that there were torches lit from every direction, meaning the other factions had already blockaded the entire area and must have hired countless of men to comb through the forest to look for the white tiger cub. Knowing that the Thousand Poison Valley was no longer safe, Jian Chen could no longer stay here. Using the cover of night to leave the valley, he began to travel through the forest with the illusionary flash. Four hours later, 
Jian Chen had traveled a far distance away where the outskirts of a city could be seen to Jian Chen. Immediately dashing for the city, Jian Chen arrived at the wall of the city before silently and sneakily climbing over it and into the city. Because it was night time, the city was extraordinarily quiet with not a single inn open. Even the streets were cold and desolate without a single person. Holding the tiger cub close to him as if he was smuggling something, Ji and Chen quickly walked by a quiet looking inn. Jumping up to the third floor, he quietly slipped inside through the window without being detected. Within the inn, Ji and Chen set the tiger cub on the bed and then took out another monster core to restore his saint force. On the second morning, Ji and Chen had changed his appearances to become a 30 year old youth once more before hiding the tiger cub beneath his clothes and leaving the tavern. One of the waitresses to the inn stared at Ji and Chen's back with a suspicious stare. If my memory isn't wrong, I could have sworn that I didn't see him yesterday. Could he have snuck in when I wasn't looking? After leaving, Ji and Chen took himself on a stroll around the city before entering a food store. Shop owner. Do you have any fresh magical beast milk for sale? This shop owner was a 40-year-old skinny but scholarly man. When he heard Jian Chen, he turned around without batting an eye at the bulge of Jian Chen's stomach. Yes yes, naturally, I have some for sale. Whichever type of magical beast milk the honored customer wants, our store will have it. Then let's have a look at your tiger milk. Make them all as fresh and as many as possible. Money is not a problem. Jian Chen spoke without a question. All right, honored customer, please wait one moment. I will be back with your items. With that, the shop owner walked to the back of the store to fetch the items. Patiently, Jian Chen stood at the front of the store. The tiger cub hadn't eaten for two days, and while Jian Chen didn't know how often the tiger cub needed to eat, it would be for the best if he had some tiger milk on hand. Soon enough, the time it took to burn a candle wick had gone by without the shop owner reappearing or any sound coming from the back at all. By now, even Jian Chen had an impatient look on his face. But for the sake of the tiger cub's meal, he could only continue to wait. Afterward, another brief moment had gone by without the shop owner ever returning. A sense of paranoia struck Jian Chen as he decided that staying here any longer would be unwise and turned to walk out. Just at that moment. A squad of armored guards suddenly walked through the doors toward Ji and Chen. Crap! Ji and Chen thought, knowing what this matter was coming to. Then, the commander of the squadron walked up to Ji and Chen with a cold glare. Who are you? Speak your name. Without hesitation, Ji and Chen responded, I am Chen Yi. What might the militia want with me? The commander of the soldiers looked at the bulge on Ji and Chen's stomach for a moment before speaking. What are you hiding in there, show it to us. Jian Chen's face grew dark, the items in my possession have nothing to do with you. HMPH, there has been a spike in criminal acts in the city recently, you must be hiding stolen goods. The commander spat out the words as if he thought Jian Chen was a fiend. Hearing that, Jian Chen gently lifted away the robes to reveal the head of the tiger cub who was still sleeping soundly. Is this an item that appeared to be stolen? The soldier's eyes immediately shined as he spotted the tiger cub. Quick, capture the cub and report it to the city lord straight away. The surrounding soldiers charged at Jian Chen with their saint weapons ready to strike. Snorting, Jian Chen's hand flashed through the air and shot a strong gust of wind that pierced into their chests before sweeping his other hand across the counter. In a single movement, he had already collected all of the nearby milk bottles into his space ring before leaving the shop. Most of the soldiers were great saints while the commander himself was only a saint master, just how could they stop him? Bursting out of the store, Ji and Chen immediately held tight to the tiger cub as he ran for the city gates. Leaping across from roof to roof with an impeccable speed, everyone on the ground could only look at him in shock as they talked to each other. Key quick. Send a report to the city lord's mansion, we've found the target. The commander who had his chest pierced by the gust of wind cried out loud as he clutched at the part of the chest. In a flash, an ear-splitting sound could be heard as a ball of fireworks flew off into the air before exploding loudly. Not too long after, 
a figure could be seen flying through the air in the direction of where the firework had exploded. Look, that person's flying. Heavens, who would have known there would be a heaven saint master within our London city? Dot. At the front of the city, a soldier guard cried out in a large voice, Hurry up and close the gates. Everyone forward. Anyone that disobeys will be killed without mercy. Archers, prepare your arrows and await the signal. Hurry up and get ready. Immediately. The soldiers all began to busy themselves with their own respective tasks as the gate began to close. At the same time, each person were shouting out commands to each other. Continuing to fly along the road, he quickly came to the city gates which were already closed and had blocked many people from entering or leaving. With a single leap, Jian Chen had already began to scale the wall in an attempt to cross it. Fire! The soldier commander had barked out. Suddenly. The already notched bows of the archers were released, causing a myriad of arrows to fly at Jian Chen while the crossbow wielders launched the heavy bolts at him as well. With a sneer, Jian Chen let a bubble of saint force out from his entire body before spreading out 20 meters away from him with a thickness of 2 inches so the arrows wouldn't pierce it. Fire, fire, fire. Don't let him get away. The commander cried out. The soldiers continued to hustle around as they resupplied for the second barrage. Jian Chen's speed was far beyond what they had anticipated and so by the time the archers had notched their arrows again, Jian Chen had already started to run further up the city walls. With each step he made, he accelerated in speed before he finally cleared the wall and escaped the city. Commander, he escaped. What should we do now? Give chase. Commander. Should we bring people to chase after him? The other soldiers could only cry out for the commander and wait for a response, but no response came. Commander, what should we do? A captain had asked once more. Suddenly, a line of blood could be seen on the commander's neck. Then, right in the middle of everyone, the head of their commander fell to the ground. Chapter 364, Inescapable Net Two. Outside the city walls was a flat prairie land that Jian Chen continued to fly across at a breakneck speed. With each step, he traversed at least 20 meters, even though he was not using the illusionary flash, he was still traveling quite fast. Now that this situation had occurred, Jian Chen knew that every single surrounding city was no longer safe. Every single power had already put out an order for him to be arrested in the case they discovered Jian Chen. Because the tiger was far too conspicuous and because Jian Chen had promised Rum Guinness that he would take care of the cub, the cub would have to stay with him. Right now, the tiger cub was far too weak to protect itself. If it were to try and live by itself, then there was a good chance a mercenary group or another magical beast would get to it. While Jian Chen was running, he suddenly felt something coming from behind. Turning his head behind, an unsightly look graced his face as he saw a figure flying through the air a few hundred meters behind. Jian Chen's heart grew a little heavy at this sight. After fighting the ancestor of the Moyan clan in the valley, he knew just how strong a heaven saint master was. Even if he gave it his all, the two sides would end up being heavily injured. There was just too much of a difference between an earth saint master and a heaven saint master, even after using the heaven's stolen fortune to multiply his strength threefold. He was only barely able to fight a heaven saint master. Jian Chen wouldn't be able to do anything either if the heaven saint master fled since they could fly through the air while Jian Chen could not. Looking at the flying heaven saint master darkly, Jian Chen immediately used the illusionary flash in order to explode across the plains and travel ten times faster than before. Jian Chen's sudden burst of speed caused the distance between him and the Heaven Saint Master to increase by a large amount. However, the Heaven Saint Master began to increase his speed as well, following close behind Jian Chen and trying to close the distance. The illusionary flash was a Heaven Tier battle skill that Jian Chen had only a small grasp of. Despite it increasing his speed many times over, it would not be enough to outrace the Heaven Saint Master. After all, Jian Chen was running on the ground, but the other was flying through the air. Jian Chen, you cannot escape. Why not hand over the seal of Treasure Mountain back to the Shi family and save your energy? At this moment, 
the voice of the Heaven Saint Master could be heard like a sound of thunder that rang through the world. Hearing this familiar sound, Ji and Chen turned back once more only to discover that the Heaven Saint Master flying through the air was the person he had talked to back in Mercenary City, it was one of the four Kai brothers. Ji and Chen continued to silently try and run away, while he had the strength to fight against a Heaven Saint Master. He did not wish to fight just yet. Even if he were to beat back the Heaven Saint Master, he would have to pay a heavy price for it. With this heavy price, then if any reinforcements came, there would be no strength left in Jian Chen to fight back. Jian Chen, just return the Seal of Treasure Mountain, you cannot escape. You most likely don't know this, but the Shi family and Jiaid clan have joined forces. Aside from us four Kai brothers, there are another four other Heaven Saint Masters watching out for you at the same time. Knowing that you came out of the Thousand Poison Valley, us eight men were able to go to the surrounding cities nearby and wait for you. I've already notified the other seven of our location, you cannot escape. The Heaven Saint Masters spoke. Hearing this, Jian Chen's face grew extremely dark. He hadn't thought that eight Heaven Saint Masters would be chasing him. Facing against just one of them was hard enough, let alone eight. With eight, there would be no chance for him to fight back at all. Jian Chen's speed continued to increase as he took out a map. The surrounding area was quickly memorized by Jian Chen before he flew off into a random direction without hesitation. Utilizing the heavens' stolen fortune to increase his speed by triple the amount, he tried to outrace the Heaven Saint Master once more using the illusionary flash. All that was left in Jian Chen's original spot was a tremendous dust storm. The sudden burst in speed from Jian Chen had caused the elder from the four Kai brothers to be stunned. Looking at the now gone figure of Jian Chen, he could only stutter out a phrase in amazement, I am impossible. Just how? How could he travel so fast? In the next moment, the elder had no other choice but to chase after Jian Chen while trying to ensure that Jian Chen did not get too far away. With a newfound determination, the elder suddenly flew higher up into the air and began to follow the trail of dust left behind Jian Chen's extreme speed. Jian Chen had never traveled at such a speed before. Right now, even the scenery was completely indistinguishable to him since it was going past him at such a blur. The illusionary flash and Heaven's stolen fortune combined had allowed Jian Chen to exceed what a Heaven Saint Master could do. However, this would result in an extreme amount of Saint Force being consumed. Being a fourth cycle Earth Saint Master, he would only be able to keep this up for two hours. After that, he would be completely out of Saint Force. Already feeling his Saint Force reserves depleting, Ji and Chen quickly took out a Class 5 Monster Core from his space ring and began to recover some of the Saint Force while he ran. Two hours later, Ji and Chen had already traveled for well over 2,000 kilometers. On the road, he had gone by many cities, but Ji and Chen hadn't dared enter any single one of them. Now that his Saint Force reserves were empty, Ji and Chen took the tiger cub to a giant mountain. The mountain was rather barren, but the peak couldn't be seen thanks to the clouds. Carrying the tiger cub, Ji and Chen arrived at a stone forest where Ji and Chen immediately set about carving a hole in the limestone for him to hide in for now. Aside from the outside markings, there was another giant stone that blocked the entrance so that the cave inside would be hidden. After all of the preparations were made, Jian Chen stumbled into the cave weakly. Taking out a night pearl to illuminate the cave, he looked around the newly constructed cave. Wu Yu Yu Yu. Wu -o. At this moment, the tiger cub began to wail as it started to gnaw on Jian Chen's arm while pressing its paws against his chest. Occasionally, sounds could be heard coming from its stomach, symbolizing that it was hungry. By now, even Jian Chen knew that the tiger cub was hungry. Hurriedly taking out a milk bottle to feed the cub. He knew that it had been at least two days since the cub had eaten. If it had been a human infant, it would have long since cried out in hunger. It was only after it had finished off 10 kilograms of milk bottles that the cub had been satisfied. The watching Jian Chen had been astonished. The tiger cub was only so big, but it had managed to drink a surprising amount of magical beast milk. Jian Chen had a total of 50 kilograms worth of milk, 
but the tiger had already consumed nearly a fifth of it. If the cub's appetite continued on like this, then he would only be able to feed the cub like this another four times. It seems that I need to collect even more magical beast milk, but I don't even know where and what other resources to gather so that the tiger cub will grow. Just what is this resource that is needed anyways? Jian Chen threw the empty bottles with a reflective pondering. The tiger cub lay on the ground with its eyes closed in satisfaction, curling up in a cute manner. The tiger cub's wings were still furrowed close to its body in a way that made them hard to see. Afterward, Ji and Chen took out another monster core to heal his saint force. Using both the illusionary flesh and the heavens stolen fortune for such an extended period of time had left Ji and Chen empty. Ten hours later, Ji and Chen finally stood back up. With the power of the azure and violet sword spirits, his absorption rate was far faster than before. In a short ten hours, his saint force had already came back to the maximum amount. Walking to the side of the cave, Ji and Chen peeked out from a small crack of the entrance. It was still early with the sun already starting to rise from the west. Ji and Chen didn't leave just yet however. Vanishing his presence, he slowly moved the stone to enlarge the hole to see what was happening outside. An hour later, a single person flew past Jian Chen's line of sight before quickly disappearing as fast as it had appeared. In another moment, a fire red colored figure blew past Jian Chen's line of sight as well. Jian Chen waited for another four hours before seeing a total of five men fly through the sky. Not too long after, they all disappeared as well. The sky outside slowly turned to night as the sun began to set. Once more, Ji and Chen returned to the inner depths of the cave and began to ponder his next step. Based off what he had seen earlier, he had known that the two Jiyid clan and Shi family were already watching the entire area. Although they hadn't found his hiding spot thanks to the hidden, well-concealed entrance, it was only a matter of time before this secret area would be discovered. So this meant he couldn't stay here for long. Furthermore, Ji and Chen was worried that the Jiyid clan and the Shi family would hire even more heaven saint masters. After all, they wanted the ruler armament in his possession. It would make sense if even their ancestors were to come by themselves personally for the sake of retrieving it. Chapter 365, Inescapable Net, 3 Ji and Chen sat on the cavern ground with a calm posture. Although it wasn't suitable to stay here for long. It wasn't time to leave just yet. He would have to wait until nightfall before he could leave so that the chance of being detected would be extremely low. Nightfall was already fast approaching on the outside and cast a dark light over the grounds. On the highest peak of the mountain, eight elders stood in a circle as the violet wind blew their hair into a messy state and forced their clothes to look as if they were ready to tear apart. Third Elder K. Do you really think Jian Chen is hiding within this mountain range? A red-robed elder looked at one of the four brothers and asked. The man nodded his head, although he is fast enough to leave me behind, I was able to see that he left no marks traveling away from this mountain range. Then would you be able to ascertain his position within this mountain range? Another person besides the third brother asked, it was the third elder of the Jiyid clan. The third brother shook his head, I couldn't. The area here is too complex and is also made of pure rock. Even if he were to leave a trace here, it would be hard to find. The other elders went quiet as they all thought about the third brother's words. They had already searched the entire mountain range for half the day, but there had been no traces at all. At that moment, the eldest brother of the Kai family spoke, third brother. I've heard that Jian Chen's speed was far faster than yours was when you flew through the air, is that true? When the third brother thought back to when he was chasing Jian Chen, he couldn't help but let out a sigh as he spoke, correct? Jian Chen's speed later on was extremely fast. He was somehow able to outpace me, with that speed, I would say even the third elder wouldn't be able to catch up. The third brother spoke. You speak words of crap. The third elder is a wind-attributed fourth cycle heaven saint master. Aside from another wind-attributed heaven saint master, there is no one alive that could outrace the third elder in speed. The fourth elder exploded with rage. The words that the third brother had said infuriated him. Fourth elder. 
The third elder waved his hand as if to abate the fourth elder's anger. The four Kai brothers and the Shi family were on special relationships with each other. All four of them were heaven saint masters with high rankings. If the fourth elder were to give them no face by swearing, then a potential problem may occur. Hearing this insult from the fourth elder, the other three brothers grew dark in the face. The four brothers were friends against the same enemy, so when the fourth elder insulted one of them, he had insulted all four of them. Fellow brothers, fourth elder has always had a nasty temper, please forgive us for that. Please put the blame on me instead. I hope that fellow brothers will not hold this against us. The third elder spoke with a kind expression on his face as he cupped his hands together in a sign of apology. The four brothers' faces improved a little after this. They weren't aware of the explosive temper of the fourth elder, and so they didn't care for it. With this apology from the third elder, they all immediately gave the matter no more attention. Let us discuss our next plan then to find Jian Chen within the shortest amount of time possible. He has the family heirlooms of our two families, we cannot afford to lose them. The elder of the Jiyid clan spoke. But the area around this place is vast. Jian Chen could be anywhere within this mountain range. With just us looking for him, I feel that we should ask for more help. Let us hire some people to help us and have some other mercenary groups join in as well. The fourth brother spoke with a vexed face. The time they had spent chasing Jian Chen had been unbearable. This plan has merit to me. The other Jiyid clan elder spoke in agreement. The third brother of the Shi family spoke, Jian Chen is an extremely smart person. Whatever we can think of, he will be able to as well. Furthermore, we've already administered such a method once in the Thousand Poison Valley, so he will definitely be prepared for such an event. I say that he will try to take advantage of the night tonight to escape. Thus, this night is the most important night. We should split into eight directions and watch over the area so that he won't be able to escape. After the next morning, we should send one person to go hire several mercenaries to comb the mountains and search for him. This method is decent, let's do it. With the proposal planned by the third brother, the rest of the eight made preparations on which area to guard before splitting up. Dot. Within the dark cave. Ji and Chen continued to sit with a calm expression. Although it was extremely early in the morning, he still made no move to leave the cave. Two hours quickly went by, making it almost four in the morning. By this time, the tiger cub had already woken up and was crawling around the dark cave while mewling with a joyful expression. Slowly opening his eyes, Ji and Chen stood up and listened for movements around the cave. Then, returning the night pearl. He scooped up the playful tiger and headed out of the cave. Walking to the cave, Jian Chen slowly moved away the stone covering the cave, afraid that he would make a loud sound and alert any of the hidden heaven saint masters. It seemed as if even the white tiger had sensed that there were dangers hidden in the night and remained quiet. Poking its head out of Jian Chen's clothes, the tiger cub stared all around the area with its bright and curious eyes. Stealthily walking away from the cave without a sound, Ji and Chen began to travel as if he was a specter in the night. With his presence concealed as he crossed the mountain range, not a single sound could be heard. At the same time 10 kilometers away from Ji and Chen, an elderly man was sitting on top of a mountain peak as if harmonizing with the world itself. After cultivating so hard and becoming a heaven saint master, not only was he able to control the world energy to fly, he could also detect any changes that happened within it. At this moment, the sitting elder immediately opened his eyes as two mysterious glows began to shine within them. There's a disturbance in the energy, something's making a move. The elder's eyes grew fierce as he instantly flew into the sky like a specter in the night. Within a few breaths, the elder had landed upon another mountain range where the night had completely overtaken it. Even without much visibility, the elder's eyes could still stare down and see something of interest to him. I've finally found you. The elder let out a smile in surprise. Then, without hesitation, he flew toward the dark figure. At the same time, the dark figure that the elder saw, seemed to have spotted the elder and immediately sped up in speed. Jian Chen, where do you think you're going? The flying elder roared before increasing his own speed to try and overtake the escaping figure. 
Within the peaceful night, the elders' explosive words had rang throughout the area so that the other seven heaven saint masters would be able to hear him loud and clear. Immediately, several sharp sounds could be heard as the other seven heaven saint masters came flying into the area. Like a pigeon startled by the twang of a bow, Ji and Chen immediately gave up all pretense of stealth and flew faster toward the mountain exit. The darkness of the night was nothing too major for any of the Heaven Saint Masters to be affected by so all of the Elders increased their speeds once more. In this chase, Ji and Chen was able to escape the area quickly. With the usage of the illusionary flash and the Heaven's stolen fortune to increase his speed, he was like an arrow in the night. In an instant, he had been able to transverse a long area of ground with a large dust cloud trailing behind. With the combined usage of both the illusionary flash and the heaven's stolen fortune, the flying heaven saint master that were chasing after him quickly disappeared in his wake. Afterward, Ji and Chen began to slow down a bit and stopped the heaven's stolen fortune. He knew that if he were to go too quickly, then the dust trail would give his position away and allow for the group of Heaven Saint Masters to quickly discover where he was. But not too long after Ji and Chen had let up his speed, a dazzling cyan light could be seen flying through the dark night with a terrifying amount of speed. Blast it all, it's a wind attributed Heaven Saint Master. Ji and Chen cursed before reactivating the Heaven's stolen fortune. His speed instantly skyrocketed so as to escape the Heaven Saint Master behind him. The wind attributed Heaven Saint Master chasing behind him was the third elder of the Shi family and was also the very same person who had initially used the poison to threaten Ji and Chen. Seeing Ji and Chen's figure grow farther and farther away, the third elder gasped in shock. It seems the third brother's words were not false. This Jian Chen's speed exceeds the realm of possibility if it is able to beat mine. This is truly hard to believe that an Earth Saint Master could achieve such a speed. Jian Chen's new speed would only be enough for him to travel for two hours. After those two hours, he would be utterly exhausted. He wouldn't even have enough strength to fight, let alone escape. Chapter 366, Inescapable Net, 4. As he ran, Ji and Chen continued to think about his options. Changing directions every so often, he made a dash for the nearest city. Ji and Chen had already memorized the surrounding environment, so he knew that a thousand kilometers away was a single first-class city. With a wind-attributed Heaven Saint Master chasing after him, he would only be able to throw him off temporarily. If he were to stop, then the Heaven Saint Master would quickly catch up, so running without a purpose or direction was out of the question. Once his Saint Force were to become empty, then he would be at a point of no return. He had to enter a city. With many different types of people around, he could hide himself without being caught. Quickly, Ji and Chen made the journey to the first class city and when he arrived he leaped over the wall to hide among the buildings sheltered behind it. Not too long after Ji and Chen's disappearance, an azure streak of light could be seen as the third elder flew through the air. Floating in the air during the middle of the night, he stared down toward the city. What a crafty youngster! Seeing how you stopped within a city, that means you cannot keep that speed up for an extended period of time. Afterward, the elder remained motionless as he studied the city with his eyes, as if trying to find a trace of Ji and Chen that could be followed. Some time later, the sounds of seven heaven saint masters flying through the air could be heard before finally stopping right next to the third elder of the Shi family. Third elder, could Jian Chen have hidden himself within the city? The fourth elder asked. The third elder let out a sigh. This Jian Chen speed is truly too fast. Even with my entire strength, I was unable to keep up with him. He managed to disappear in the city and I've yet to figure out where he is located. How? How is that possible? Third Elder, is Jian Chen's speed so truly fast that even you cannot keep up? The Fourth Elder's eyes grew extremely wide in disbelief at the words coming out from the Third Elder's mouth. But he wasn't the only one. The two brothers from the Jiyid clan could only stare in disbelief as well. An Earth Saint Master being able to outpace a wind attributed Heaven Saint Master was an impossible feat until now. Hearing this, the third brother of the Kai family hid a small smile. If even a wind attributed Heaven Saint Master wasn't able to catch Jian Chen, 
then Jian Chen escaping from his hands was not too much of an embarrassing thing. This Jian Chen is far too crafty to hide in a city where there are thousands of people and buildings. Finding him will become an extremely arduous task. If we are not careful, he'll take advantage of our carelessness and slip out among the others. One of the elders from the Jiyid clan spoke. Fellow comrades, it's already dawn, we should hurry up and assign ourselves to a specific area to ensure he does not escape our grasp once more. The third brother spoke. The way I see things is that the eight of us should go to the city lord and have him garrison some soldiers to help us. The rest of us will then guard the cardinal gates as well as the other isolated areas of the city. This way, Jian Chen cannot escape from us. Another elder spoke from the Jiyid clan. The third brother nodded his head lightly. This is the only option left. I will go and form the city lord. The seven of you should go spread out and guard your areas. We must maintain a strict guard. No matter who tries to leave they must use clear water to wash their faces. This is to prevent Jian Chen from changing his face. If anyone doesn't comply, be merciless. With the plan in place, Everyone set out to accomplish their side of things. Within a large garden, a group of soldiers with torches held high could be seen patrolling the area. Just from their appearances, anyone could tell that this area did not belong to a regular person. Not too long after the guards had patrolled the area, a dark shadow suddenly appeared from the side. Within the guise of night, he entered without a sound into one of the empty rooms. This figure was Jian Chen. After selecting an empty house to reside in, Jian Chen strained his ears for any outside noises before settling down with the white tiger by his side. Taking out another class 5 monster core, he began to recover his lost saint force. The white tiger seemed as if it had sensed the danger Jian Chen was in, so on the way, the tiger cub had been very quiet as it remained around Jian Chen's chest. Its eyes looked about the area in curiosity, and when they got to the empty house, it sat by Jian Chen's side, straining its ears as well. The cub didn't make another move. Time went by as the sun quickly hung high into the sky. By this point, Jian Chen had fully recovered his strength and stood up to survey the area. This room hadn't been inhabited by a person for a very long time so there was a layer of dust on the ground. Furthermore, the arrangements of the furniture were rather basic, as if meant for the next resident to do the arrangements when they moved in. After sitting in the room for several moments, Ji and Chin's eyes fell upon his space ring. With some hesitation, he grabbed another space ring and began to divide up his things. The ruler armaments, heaven tier battle skill and several other precious objects went into one space ring while the other space ring contained several sets of clothes, some monster cores, and money. Then, Jian Chen swapped out his space ring for the other one. The space ring with his more precious items went into a small box which he began to find a hiding place for it. Since there were eight heaven saint masters surrounding the city, it was difficult to predict if he would survive or not so he needed to prepare himself. One plan was to hide the more precious items in a space ring and place it in a concealed area. Even if he were to die, Jian Chen had no desire to see the items be recovered by either the Jiyid clan or Shi family. If he were to escape from this calamity, after everything had blown over, he could come back and retrieve the items. After locking the items within the box, Ji and Chen thought for a moment before hurriedly opening the box up once more. Taking the Duanyan sword and the seal of Treasure Mountain out, he placed them in a third space ring. He knew that the third brother of the Shi family had a method to find the ruler armaments, so he needed to separate them from the other precious items. Nightfall came by quickly, leaving the garden empty. Ji and Chen lightly opened the doors and escaped outside with the white tiger. In a moment, he came across the well used by the inhabitants of the building. Taking the space ring with the box in it, he tossed it into the well and headed back toward the room he was staying in. Leaping onto the beams of the building, Ji and Chen released a sharp amount of sword chi from his fingertips and dug a small finger-sized hole for the other space ring to be placed. Placing the space ring with the ruler armaments into this hole, Ji and Chen filled the hole back up making it extremely hard to notice and utterly impossible for even the gods to know. After all of this was done, 
Ji and Chen let out a sigh in relief. Even if he were to be discovered, it would still not be easy for either of the two families. At daybreak, Ji and Chen changed his face again. He then hugged the obedient, little white tiger against his chest and lightly rubbed its head as he said in a low voice, Little tiger, I need to go scout around to figure out the situation, and can't bring you with me. You have to listen well, and obediently stay here. Don't go running around. All right? The tiger cub's bright eyes stared up at Jian Chen, leaving him unsure of whether or not his words were understood. Ignoring the issue, Jian Chen took out several milk bottles and left the tiger cub on the bed before leaving the room. Jian Chen discreetly made his way onto the streets from the manor. By walking from the alleyway onto the main street, he made it seem like he was just another passerby. He then began to inspect the houses to see what type of area he was in. On the gates to the villa, a large board could be seen hanging overhead with the words, Huang Pu Trading. Evidently, this area was heavily reliant on trading. Remembering the name of the villa, Ji and Chen left the area and began to wander around the city. A first-class city was far bigger and more luxurious than a second-class city. When one entered a first-class city, one would be able to see several rich and strong-looking mercenaries that were clearly not seen in such concentrated amounts anywhere else. Suddenly, a loud noise could be heard as a squadron of armored soldiers visited store after store as if searching for something on the road. They continued to question everyone in such a manner that caused everyone to grumble in annoyance and confusion. Just then, a soldier blocked Jian Chen's path. Have you seen a person carrying a pure white magical beast anywhere? I have not. Jian Chen's face didn't betray any emotions as he replied. You may go. Remember, if you are to see either a snowy white magical beast or a man with perhaps an unnatural bulge, you are to immediately report this to the city lord. The soldier's face carried a serious look as he stared at Jian Chen. Yes, understood. If I see such a thing, I will make sure to notify the city lord straight away. Jian Chen replied. After that, the soldier didn't pay any more attention to Jian Chen and left him to interrogate someone else. After walking down three streets, Ji and Chen could see the same soldiers visit every single store or home and block off people to interrogate them. Carelessly, Ji and Chen wandered the streets before finally coming across the city gates. Instead of a steady stream of people walking in or out, there was a large congestion of merchants and travelers. Walking to the higher levels of one of the nearby restaurants, Ji and Chen could only see a large amount of soldiers guarding the city gates with several large vats of water. With each person that tried to enter or leave, the soldiers would use a wet rag to scrub at their faces. Even the rich and powerful were not exempt from this treatment, much to their anger. Seeing this, Ji and Chen couldn't help but smile bitterly. Right now this city was under the complete control of the Jiyid clan and the Shi family. With this, they had set out an inescapable net all over the city. Chapter 367, Whereabouts Revealed In order to not rouse any suspicion, Ji and Chen left the restaurant after some time and immediately went to go by a Class II magical beast mount. After disguising himself as a mercenary, he set out for the other three gates to see if they were undergoing a similar situation. On the way, Ji and Chen had been stopped several times over by soldiers. Leisurely answering the questions, Ji and Chen could only secretly rejoice to himself about the fact that the soldiers did not require everyone within the city to wash their faces as well. Although his disguise was flawless almost to the point of perfection, it would not hold against water. If he were to be asked to wash his face, his disguise would wash away quickly. This entire day, Jian Chen could only wander around the city in an attempt to figure out where the eyes and ears of the Jiyid clan and the Shi family did not extend to. Although he could see many good places to hide within the city, none were long-term hiding spots. Within the official halls of Huang Pu Trading, an elder around the age of 70 could be seen seated at the first spot. On both sides of him, Around twenty younger men could be seen with strange glints in their eyes. The elder sitting at the first spot was the current patriarch of the Huangpu clan. With a bright glow in his eyes, he slowly spoke, 
The city is in a strange commotion today. All of the soldiers have been ordered and dispatched to search for a person with an unknown appearance within the city. I was just notified by the city lord that all of the clans within Moonlight City must comply with the city's operation. In the case that we find a person with a snowy white magical beast or someone with an unnatural bulge, we are to report to the lord immediately. With that, the elder stopped speaking for a moment to look at a middle-aged man near him. Lend, you are the one in charge of our guards. In a moment go and take half our men to search the area under our control. Then take the other half to comb through our entire compound. In the case that he is spotted, do not let him escape. Understood? Yes, Patriarch. The Huangpu clansman Lind replied before hesitating for a moment. Patriarch, this is only just a single person. Is it necessary to use so much of our resources to find him? That's right, Patriarch, I think this is strange as well. Just how could the city lord decree such an order like this? Using the entire garrison to search for a single person within the city, isn't this making a mountain out of a molehill? Straight away all of the men sitting down at the table burst into their own misgivings. The Patriarch could only sigh, this was a sudden development for me as well. But the situation is far more dire than you all believe. If the city lord finds that the person they are looking for was spotted in our territory or decides that we were hiding him on purpose, then the consequences will be severe and our clan may disappear. Upon hearing this, the group of men sitting down instantly turned pale as they all grew frightened at the consequences. Good, this meeting is settled then. Lend. Go and lead the search yourself. Do not allow any accidents to happen or any stone left untouched. Otherwise, the damage to our Huangpu clan will be far too severe for us to handle. The Patriarch spoke with a serious look. Patriarch, you needn't worry. I, Lend, will take charge of this matter personally. As the Huangpu clan prepared to search for the person, Every other minor or a major clan in Minyang City were doing the same thing. The entire atmosphere within the city had grown to a frantic height. Within the Huangpu clan, a squadron of guards came to the villa to search the place. Whether it was the garden or log house, they did not spare a single room from being searched. Without overlooking anything, they had even searched all of the high-ranking member rooms without exception. At this moment, one of the guards arrived at one of the abandoned rooms and began to search inside. Everyone be careful, do not allow even the cupboards to be untouched. Do not let a single detail escape from your eyes. One of the guards spoke out in warning. Suddenly, the room that Jian Chen had hidden in was opened with several guards walking in to start trifling around the place. Sensing the nearby danger. The white tiger cub silently curled up within the corner of the room as both of its bright eyes stared out along with its ears straining to listen for any sound. At this time, the bedsheets that had fallen to the ground and covered the cub were ripped apart, revealing the face of one of the guards as he looked underneath the bed. It was very spacious below the bed, and despite the tiger cub's attempt to hide, its snowy white fur was far too eye-catching to escape detection. Captain. I've found something. The guard cried out instantly. Straight away, the captain came into the room with a grace face. What is it? Captain, take a look under the bed. The guard crawled down and pointed. Crawling onto the ground to take a look, the captain soon discovered the white tiger cub that was desperately trying to hide. Quickly, notify Overseer Lind. The captain's face grew shocked as he ordered the soldier next to him. In a flash. The overseer Lind was notified and the moment he saw the white tiger cub, his face grew unnaturally grim as he barked, take positions, search the perimeter. In the case you find someone suspicious, apprehend him immediately. Yes. The guards all replied with equally serious expressions. Soon after, the white tiger cub had been brought to Lind who then rushed it toward the patriarch's room. On the way, the white tiger cub had clearly shown its disapproval of Lin by biting and scratching at his arms and chest with a growling sound. Although the white tiger cub was not an ordinary beast and belonged to the ancient race of the winged tiger god, it had only just been born. Right now it was as frail as a newborn infant. Walking was already a hard task, and it did not have enough strength to protect itself. Within the main halls, 
the entirety of the upper-ranking members of the Huangpu clan had already gathered. Each one with them had a serious expression as they turned to look at the growling white tiger cub in the patriarch's hands. Have you made your investigations? Who raised this tiger cub? The Huangpu patriarch cast the entire group of people in front of him. The twenty men in front of him shook their heads slowly before Lin spoke, Patriarch, I've already made inquiries. Within our Huangpu clan, not a single member has raised this beast, all of them haven't even heard of such a magical beast before. Since it's like that, then this magical beast must be the one the city lord is looking for. Lind, go and report this matter to the city lord's mansion straight away. The patriarch spoke gravely. Dot. Even after the city lord had heard the information, the entire city dared not rest. An elder was immediately dispatched to the Huangpu clan, and even the patriarch dared not to say anything out of line to him. This elder was the third brother of the Shi family who had been waiting in the city lord's mansion for any information. Upon hearing that the cub had been found, the third brother had a small smile on his face an entire body of snowy white fur, less than a meter tall and has wings. It appears that this is the tiger that Jian Chen left behind. Ha ha, Jian Chen, you should know by now. I've already cast an inescapable net across the entire Moonlight City, you cannot escape. Dot. After an entire day, Jian Chen had already transversed the entire Moonlight City on the Magical Beast Mount. The situation had been as he expected. All four gates were being tightly watched and even the inhabitants were being interrogated. Everyone had been forced to wash their faces in order to leave the city, thus removing any idea Jian Chen had to escape the city with a disguise. His regular appearance had already been drawn and distributed throughout the city, so even if Jian Chen were to use his regular face, he would be spotted instantly. Jian Chen had rented a room within an inn and had given the class to Magical Beast Mount to a waiter to look after. After waiting for nightfall, he slipped out of the inn without a word and leaped back toward the Huangpu compound without being detected. Like a silent shadow jumping over the wall, he carefully ran toward the room where he had hidden the tiger cub. Creeping into the room, Jian Chen knelt down beside the floor and took out a night pearl from his space belt to light up the room. But the moment he looked underneath the bed, it was empty. The white tiger cub was nowhere to be seen. Jian Chen's face blanched as he immediately looked around the room with the night pearl giving him light. As he looked, he could see a series of footsteps on the dusty ground. Jian Chen's heart began to beat wildly as he mind came to a single conclusion. The white tiger cub had been captured. Within the semi-illuminated room, Jian Chen clenched his fists tightly as his eyebrows furrowed together. Leaving the room, he immediately raced for the center hall of the compound. Chapter 368, No Way Out Carefully advancing toward the center hall, Jian Chen began to look around. Jian Chen knew that his identity could be revealed at any moment. But he had to take back the tiger cub at any cost. He had promised Rum Guinness to look after her cub, so he could not allow anything to happen to the cub. Tonight had been especially quiet in the garden. With it also being very dark and not that many patrolmen, Ji and Chen had been able to sneak around to the center hall like a ghost in his pure black clothing. There was an utmost need for stealth if he wanted to take back the tiger. Just as Ji and Chen drew close to the loft in the hall. A familiar sound could be heard in Jian Chen's ears, it was the growling sound of the tiger cub. Hearing the cries of the tiger cub, Jian Chen had a slight smile on his face as he immediately began to search for where the sound was coming from. He didn't think that it would be that easy to find the cub. Suddenly, the entire area became brightly lit as torches appeared everywhere around Jian Chen and dyed the place a bright red. Jian Chen you really did return. I was thinking you were going to try and escape this time. An elderly voice could be heard all of a sudden before a person walked out among the crowd. The person who had spoke wore a white robe and had a benevolent smile to his face. It was the third brother of the Shi family, and right behind him were the high-ranking members of the Huangpu clan. In the hands of the patriarch was the tiger cub. Wu Yu Yu Yu. Wu Yu Yu Yu. Upon seeing Jian Chen, the tiger cub in the patriarch's hands grew excited and began to flail its paws in an attempt to get to him. With a small but urgent growl, 
The four paws began to stamp onto the patriarch's chest, as if unwilling to be hugged by the patriarch any longer. Seeing that he had been discovered, Ji and Chen leaped out from the shadows after realizing they were useless. The patriarch of the Huangpu clan began to measure up Ji and Chen. From what he could see, this Ji and Chen was well under the age of 30, a youth in every sense of the word. Is this really the person the city lord and these respected men are after? The Huangpu patriarch thought. Ji and Chen gave a leveled glare at the Huangpu patriarch. Return the tiger cub to me. Ignoring Ji and Chen's request, the patriarch turned to the third brother of the Xi family. Although he was the patriarch of a clan, he knew that it was utterly compulsory that he listened to this elder in front of him. The third brother stared back at Ji and Chen evenly. Ji and Chen, I have put up with you long enough. Return the ruler armaments back to us immediately or else do not blame us for our actions. Although you are extremely fast. We know you cannot keep it up for long. You cannot escape from us. Ji and Chen turned to the third brother with a laughing smile. I'm afraid that even after I return the ruler armaments to you, you will use them in return against me. I am no idiot. If you wish to take back the ruler armaments, you will have to come and get them. Go die then. The third brother's face grew exceedingly dark as he lost the kindly expression on his face. With a frightening glint. He flew toward Jian Chen with his saint weapon ready to pierce Jian Chen's chest. Although Jian Chen was extremely fast, he was still an earth saint master in the end. Someone on that caliber of strength was no match for a heaven saint master like the third brother. But when the third brother had taken action, so did Jian Chen. Initializing both the illusionary flash and the heaven's stolen fortune. His entire figure flickered away from existence before reappearing behind the patriarch. Taking back the cub, his feet smashed against the ground and disappeared from the area once again. A ripple of energy appeared behind Jian Chen's back as he retreated. In that instant, the third brother had slammed against Jian Chen's back with extreme force. PCH. Jian Chen spat out a mouthful of blood before disappearing into the night. The third brother looked up to the sky before letting out a whistle that sounded almost like a clap of thunder within the dark sky. Then, he flew into the sky and chased after Jian Chen like a speeding arrow. The moment the other Heaven Saint Masters heard the whistle from their positions, they grew startled. Soaring into the sky, they began to look down as if preparing to ambush Jian Chen at any given moment. With a plan like this, no matter where Jian Chen went, he would be followed and blocked by any one of the Heaven Saint Masters. Half a moment later, the sound of the sound barrier breaking could be heard as one of the floating Kai brother's eyes squinted. Staring with an amazing amount of focus, he could see a black figure flying at tremendous speeds toward his direction. The fourth Kai brother let out another whistle signaling the others to begin the trap. After taking out his own saint weapon in preparations, all of the fire elements in the area around him began to gather. With a wave of his hand, a single 20-meter-long agglomeration of sword chi could be seen before it was sent flying straight for Ji and Chen. As he was escaping, Ji and Chen could suddenly felt a large concentration of sword chi being sent overhead. With a startled look, he immediately leaped from the streets onto the rooftop of a nearby building without losing a fraction of speed in his attempt to dodge. Bang! A large fire red sword Chi smashed into the ground with an explosive bang, filling the air with an intense heat that blew across the environment. All of the buildings nearby crumbled underneath its might, leveling the street. As for right where the sword Chi had struck, there was a 10 meter wide. 20 meter deep crater. Jian Chen's face maintained a grave expression as he looked at the crater. From this, he could tell the strength of this person was far stronger than the patriarch of the Moyan clan. The surrounding air around the Kai brother began to ripple with heat as if a meteorite was streaking through the sky before another attack of sword Qi smashed into the ground where Jian Chen was. Seeing that Jian Chen's speed was far too much for him to keep up with, the elder quickly turned the entire place into an ocean of fire so as to ignite even the air. The heat was so intense that it could melt steel. A heaven saint master was already capable of manipulating the energy of the world. The fourth brother was capable of manipulating the fire elements in the world to form a 500 meter wide and a 100 meter tall ocean of fire. 
Jian Chen growled slightly under his breath as a ripple of saint force came out from within him to protect his entire body from the ocean of fire. At the same time, he used the illusionary flash to blow past the attack with another attempt to escape from the city. Suddenly, another three streaks of fire came across the sky like shooting stars with a fiery trail. Approaching quickly, the closest heaven saint master had already burst outward with another attack of fire. By this point, Ji and Chen was already surrounded by the ocean of fire. It was a hundred meters tall and covered the sky with its flame. There was nowhere in front that Ji and Chen could borrow for shelter, so he could only choose to continue leaping forward. The temperature within the sea of fire had been so hot that the saint force he had around his body instantly shattered and ignited his clothes on fire. It was so hot that even his hair, eyebrows, and eyelashes were on the verge of burning up. Resisting the magma-like heat fire all around him, Ji and Chen continued to travel toward the exit of the Sea of Fire. Bang! Suddenly, a loud explosion could be heard as the Sea of Fire exploded, scattering light everywhere. The darkness of the night was illuminated for a brief moment, and those who were sleeping soundly were quickly awakened. Within the Sea of Fire still, Jian Chen had suffered a tremendous hit. Spitting out a mouthful of blood, he managed to escape the radius of fire toward the city. The elder floating in the air began to gasp for breath with a pale face as he sighed, even after using such an explosive wildfire and using up almost all my energy, you weren't killed. But even that, you are still heavily damaged, I doubt that even you will get far now. At this moment. The other three brothers appeared by his side. One of them hurriedly spoke out, Brother, where is he? He escaped that way, after him, quick. The four brothers immediately gave chase, and not too long after, another azure glow could be seen streaking past the four brothers and toward the direction where Ji and Chen had disappeared to. With his heavy injuries, Ji and Chen couldn't travel along the road fast enough, but it was still at a decent pace. An hour later, Ji and Chen arrived at a forest. Back during the Ocean of Fire, Ji and Chen had made sure to protect the tiger cub to the best of his abilities so it had not been injured at all. With another mouthful of blood, Ji and Chen slowly tried to regain his breath. Right about now, he had used up two thirds of his saint force, making it impossible for him to escape from the Heaven Saint Masters. Suddenly, an azure glow could be seen across the sky as the wind attributed Heaven Saint Master chased after Ji and Chen. Sighing to himself inwardly, Ji and Chen resigned himself to accepting that calamity will befall him. Petting the tiger wrapped up in his chest, Ji and Chen could only feel shame. He had promised Rum Guinness to take care of her child, but now that he was stuck in this situation, he had no more power to do so. Looking for a tree. Jian Chen used his fists to rip apart a hole in its trunk. Carefully putting down the white tiger in it, he covered the hole back up to prevent anyone from noticing. Then, turning around, he began to leave the area. He continued to run a little farther, so that they would be far enough away from the tiger cub. Jian Chen stopped to catch his breath and waited for the Heaven Saint Master to come. Right now. He had given up on running away. The Heaven Saint Master was nearly upon him. It was time for him to repay them for the damage he had taken from the Sea of Fire. Chapter 369 A Fusion of the Azure and Violet Sword Chi. Not too long after, an azure streak of light could be seen at the very end of the horizon. Flying toward Jian Chen with a blinding speed, the Heaven Saint Master came to a stop in the air above Jian Chen. Although it was dark outside, this would not impact a Heaven Saint Master at all. Ji and Chen, keep on running, why did you stop? The third elder spoke with a cold sneer 50 meters in the air. He was no longer the amiable person from before. After squandering so much time to catch Ji and Chen, the third elder had already lost his kindly temperament. Sitting down on the ground, Ji and Chen was currently using a class 5 monster core to recover his strength. Even if he had decided on not running away, he did not plan on making it easy for the Heaven Saint Masters. At his death, there would be a heavy price to pay. The third elder floating above Jian Chen calmly without making a single move. The other members from the Jiyid clan and Shi family weren't here yet, 
so he had no plans on making a move toward Jian Chen. He had to make sure the rest of them would come first so as to save face for the other clan and disrupt the relationship they had between them. An hour later, two of the Heaven Saint Masters from the Jai Eid clan and the remaining brothers of the Kai family arrived. The eight Heaven Saint Masters then locked Jian Chen within a ring, making escape impossible for him. Jian Chen, return the Duan Yun sword and we will leave your body intact. The Jai Eid clan elder barked, Return the seal of Treasure Mountain or else we will make sure that you will beg for death. Roared another of the Kai brothers. Hearing these two men try to command him, Jian Chen snorted as he leaped up and tossed the still undrained Class 5 monster core at the Kai brothers. If you wish for your ruler armament back, then come and take it. For such a mighty bunch of Heaven Saint Masters, you are unable to chase down a single Earth Saint Master. If it were not for my inadequate Saint Force, you would have no chance of catching me. What a useless bunch. The eight Heaven Saint Masters grew grey in the face as they heard Jian Chen's words. They knew all too much already that not being able to catch a single Earth Saint Master was an undeniably shameful thing. Disgraceful child, allow me to see just what ability you have. The fourth elder barked out as he rushed toward Jian Chen with his yellow giant sword billowing outward with saint force. An explosive glare could be seen in Jian Chen's eyes as he brought his awareness to the highest level possible. Using the spirit sword, the light twin sword instantly became a bright silver light that shot toward the fourth elder's throat with a sonic boom-like sound. It was as if the sword had reached the speed of light, flying through the air and leaving behind after images of itself. Almost no one could see it clearly thanks to its speed and the added bonus of the night. Caught off guard, the fourth elder had his throat pierced straight through with the sword, leaving behind a large hole. Straight after the sword left from the fourth elder's throat, it flew straight toward the third elder 50 meters above the ground. The third elder's eye released a refined glint as a large amount of saint force flooded out from his body, protecting him completely. The moment the sword made contact, its momentum began to slow down instantaneously before stopping completely. At the same time, a single machete appeared within the third elder's hand. With an explosive bang. The air around the machete began to distort from the energy being gathered within it. Then, with a grunt, the third elder brought the machete smashing down upon Jian Chen's light wind sword. Ding! With a crisp metallic sound, the light wind sword dropped down to the ground powerlessly. On the blade, there was a single crack. PFT! Jian Chen sprayed out a mouthful of blood from the damage dealt to him. With his light twin sword connected to him and being damaged while using the spirit sword, his senses had been harmonized with the weapon itself. Not only did the third elder's strike damage his saint weapon, but it had dealt a heavy blow to his spirit as well, causing a headache for Jian Chen. Even after having a large hole blown through his throat, the fourth elder of the Shi family was like the ancestor of the Moyan clan and did not die. Instead, the fourth elder looked at Jian Chen with a newfound fear. He had only been a few meters away from Jian Chen and didn't have much time to prepare himself, but that instant had led to him being unable to defend himself against the light wind sword. If he was an earth saint master, then he would have died instantly. Quick, hurry up and refine this. The third elder took out a pill. Instead of placing it within his mouth for the fourth elder to chew, he tossed it into the hole left behind by Jian Chen. With difficulty, Jian Chen managed to recall the light wind sword back to his hand. There was some pain in his heart as he gazed at the crack in his sword. The power contained within the machete of the third elder was far too much for his own sword to handle. Suddenly, a fire red glow appeared above Jian Chen's head illuminating the area completely. Lifting his head up, Jian Chen could only see the eldest Kai brother begin to manipulate the fire elements within the world before shooting it toward him. The amount of pure berserk energy swelling up from the blast scared even Jian Chen. Throwing away his hesitation, Jian Chen threw himself to the ground and rolled away right as the giant sword of fire slammed into the ground where Jian Chen once stood. The entire ground began to shake before splitting apart to reveal a 30-meter-long fissure. Just as Jian Chen stood back up, 
a strong gust of wind could be felt coming from behind him. One of the elders from the Jiyid clan had suddenly appeared behind Jian Chen to stab him with his water attributed saint weapon. Turning around abruptly, Jian Chen used the heavens stolen fortune to multiply his strength three times over. The light wind sword in his hand began to glow with an azure and violet light as it struck against the other elders saint weapon. Following another explosive boom, Ji and Chen spat out another mouthful of blood as he was thrown back down to the ground. Each and every Heaven Saint Master here was far stronger than the Moyan clan ancestor, and with Ji and Chen's strength nearly running dry, he was in no position to take a single blow from any of them. Cough. Ji and Chen continued to spit out blood as his face turned paler and paler. A large amount of blood had already escaped his body, and with so many severe blows, his fighting strength was all but gone. Brat, I'll make sure that you will beg for death. A coarse voice could be heard as the fourth elder of the Kai family coughed out the words with difficulty. Landing on the ground, he took out his saint weapon and stalked toward Jian Chen. Biting his lip, Jian Chen struggled to climb back up and clasp onto his weapon. After taking on the blow from the Jiyid clan elder, several more cracks appeared on his sword. Even if I die. I won't allow you all to claim my life so easily. Despite the heavy injuries, Jian Chen still had a resolute glare in his eyes. A faint glow of azure and violet appeared on his sword once more, covering the entirety of his sword. However this time, the two colors began to meld together. As the fourth elder drew close to Jian Chen, he swung the sword horizontally in an attempt to behead Jian Chen. A crazed expression overtook Jian Chen's eyes as he clutched his sword tightly. In that split moment, the combined azure and violet light began to shake for a moment before the lights started to flicker and fully harmonize with each other. Just as the two sword chief used with each other, an eye-piercing light shot forth from the light wind sword. No longer was the light purely azure or violet. It was now the two colors combined. There was azure in the violet, and violet in the azure as if the two were one the entire time. Suddenly, an unbelievably strong amount of sword chi appeared and filled up the entire area. In a second, the entire world seemed as if it belonged to this realm of the sword. No matter where anyone went to, all they could feel was the overwhelming power of sword chi. This amount of sword chi was almost unbelievable to imagine. It allowed anyone to believe that it was strong enough to set the heavens aflame or even destroy the firmament of the heavens. But in the light wind sword, there was still a minute crack to be seen. This scene had caused all eight of the heaven saint masters to grow aghast at this unexpected change. Their eyes began to widen as they stared at the explosive light pouring out from the light wind sword with a mystified look. When it came to this sword chi, all they could feel was dread. Ju. Just what is this energy? The eldest Kai brother's voice began to tremble with fear. Suddenly. A gentle gust of wind blew across the eight heaven saint masters, reducing parts of their clothes to tiny fragments. Blade marks began to appear all over their bodies and even their hair was reduced to tiny pieces as if grounded into powder. Slowly, blood began to appear from their wounds and dyed their entire body with its redness. The entire air around the area was no longer the same simple air. It was now imbued completely with sword chi. When the light wind had blown across their bodies, it was the same as being struck with countless blades of sword chi. Even if they were to breathe in a breath of air, their inner organs and viscera would be instantly cut apart by the sword chi gathered around them. With the fusion of the azure and violet sword chi, the entire area had became a realm ruled by the sword. This was a domain where only the sword chi remained supreme. Each of the eight heaven saint masters were utterly breathless. Shortly afterward, they began to release a large amount of saint force within their bodies in an attempt to protect themselves from the sword chi that was looming all around them. Quick, kill him. The third elder spoke with unconcealed fear and a trembling voice. Chapter 370 Eternal damnation. Quick, kill him. The third elder spoke with unconcealed fear and a trembling voice. The third elder's words seemed to have a rousing effect on everyone. Instantly snapping out of their stupor, they all began to charge at Jian Chen. The closest person to Jian Chen was the fourth elder whose eyes radiated with a fierce glow. Just as he stalked toward Jian Chen to swing his sword, 
A sudden change overcame his face. This was because he had unexpectedly felt his body being squashed with an unknown amount of pressure from the surrounding air. Like an invisible restraint, he was unable to break free from his confines no matter just how much force he put into his movements. Jian Chen's eyes began to dilate with a strange craze to them. He would not hesitate at all to pay a heavy price if it meant fighting with all his strength. Waving the light twin sword in his right hand, he stabbed the azure and violet sword Qi infused light wind sword toward the fourth elder's saint weapon. Ding! As if his saint weapon was tofu, the fourth elder's saint weapon shattered into two pieces. With a muffled cry, a large amount of blood came out of his mouth as his face grew deathly pale. Even after breaking apart the fourth elder's saint weapon, Ji and Chen didn't have the luxury of being surprised. With a wave of his hand, he brought the light wind sword down and stabbed it straight through the elder's chest. Ah! The fourth elder let out a miserable shriek of pain as the azure and violet sword she stabbed into his body. It was as if an unbelievable amount of power was erupting within him as the fused sword she shot throughout every point in his body. In an instant, his entire body became mutilated and his bones reduced to dust. By this point, the remaining Heaven Saint Masters had already shot down with their sword Qi aimed at Jian Chen. Abruptly turning around, Jian Chen's light wind sword tore apart the skies with sword Qi as it defended itself against the other attacks. Wherever the sword moved, a black fissure followed. When the Seven Heaven Saint Masters sword Qi struck against the fused sword Qi of Jian Chen, not a single of them could predict that their attacks would dissipate into the void. Fourth Elder Upon seeing the mutilated body of the fourth elder, the third elder's teeth nearly fractured under the intense grinding. Fury overtook his face as he roared out in anguish. Even now, Ji and Chen continued to spit out blood, even his pores had started to leak with it. Not only was the light wind sword in his hand fractured, but several cracks in Ji and Chen's skin could be seen, slowly oozing blood onto the outside surface. The amalgamation of the azure and violet sword Qi amazed everyone with its power. However with Ji and Chin's current strength, he was unable to control this powerful source of energy. Since Ji and Chen wasn't able to control it, he suffered from the repercussions. If this went on for any longer, even if he didn't die from the Heaven Saint Masters, then he would perish by the repercussions. Ah! The longer Ji and Chen wielded the fused azure and violet sword Qi, the stronger the repercussions would be. The torment on both his mind and body had caused Jian Chen to howl out almost animalistically. Leaping into the air with reckless abandon, he charged toward the closest Heaven Saint Master and scattered the light from his sword onto him. The moment the Heaven Saint Master had the sword pointed at him, he suddenly froze in place. Feeling the attack of Jian Chen, the eldest Kai brother blanched as he tried to retreat back only to feel terrified when he realized that he was stuck in place. Even the space around him seemed to have frozen in place as he stood firmly in place without being able to budge. Overwhelmed with shock and terror, the eldest brother immediately tried to use his inner saint force in order to break free of his constraints. In the end, it was futile. He made no advancements anywhere. Right in front of the terrified eyes of the eldest brother, Jian Chen's light wind sword speared straight through his chest before the fused sword Qi exploded within his body. In an instant, his entire body exploded into small pieces of flesh and bone before the eldest brother could even scream. And thus, the eldest Kai brother had his life extinguished. PCH. After killing the eldest brother, Jian Chen let out yet another mouthful of blood. The repercussions were already reaching the limits of what Jian Chen could handle. Blood was starting to drip from all seven openings on his heads, and combined with his extremely pale face, this visage made him seem like a horrifying ghost. Eldest brother, eldest brother, L. Eldest brother. As soon as their eldest brother died, the other three brothers' eyes grew bloodshot with anger and disbelief. Blast it all. Just what energy is this? How could it be this strong? We must kill him quickly, or else we are all in danger. An elder from the Jaid clan cried out, We cannot delay any longer, unleash your battle skills. 
the third elder spoke in a serious tone. Two heaven saint masters had already died by Jian Chen's hand. This was a result that he had not expected. He had never heard of an earth saint master that could kill a heaven saint master. With a mutual look at each other, the two elders from the Jiyid clan immediately began to utilize their heaven tier battle skills while the third elder began to make his move as well. Jian Chen, you shall pay for the death of our eldest brother with your life. The third brother roared out loud in righteous fury as he began to use an advanced earth tier battle skill along with his other two brothers. With the Heaven Saint Masters all using their battle skills, the combined power was far greater than the Heaven Tier battle skill Ming Dong had used. With just the three Earth Tier battle skills, an oppressive amount of power forced itself onto Jian Chen's body, causing him to gasp as his bones began to crack under the pressure. In the form of a large long ranged attack, the three brothers of the Kai family released a flame that seared across the skies and shot toward Jian Chen. Ah! Jian Chen let out a howl to the heavens as he focused all of his strength into his right arm and brought his Li Twin sword smashing down onto the attack aimed at him. The fused sword Chi had devoured the attack from the three brothers and instantly shattered their saint weapons at the same time. At the very moment their weapons broke, the three brothers' blood instantly filled the sky. The glow on Jian Chen's sword began to dissipate now that Jian Chen had reached his limit and could no longer handle either the fused sword Qi or the repercussions that came along with it. Suddenly, the weather began to grow unstable as a single layer of black clouds began to descend down from the skies. Several flashes of lightning could be seen crackling within the clouds as well. The atmosphere began to grow tense as the entire area was slowly consumed by this new source of power. Following soon after, an unbelievably strong amount of pressure descended upon Jian Chen, forcing his bones to crack and shatter, facing the sky with an even paler face. Jian Chen could only see the two elders from the Jiyid clan and the third elder from the Shi family protect themselves with a layer of saint force. Floating high in the sky, the three heaven saint masters were using their heaven tier battle skills at the same time with a power so large that they had influenced the weather itself. A sharp stinging pain could be felt all over Jian Chen's body as he struggled to keep himself standing upright with a victorious smile. He had already pulled two heaven saint masters to their deaths and shattered the saint weapons of the three remaining Kai brothers. If he could take their battle skills, then even death would be worth it. In a flash, the preparation time for the three heaven saint masters came to an end. In the next moment, Three rays of dazzling light could be seen jetting toward Jian Chen with a speed that shook the air around them. The three heaven saint masters were all extremely cautious and did not want to use their saint weapons to clash with Jian Chen. Unconsciously, Jian Chen had readied his already fractured light twin sword up in a guard stance. Following a loud bang, the three heaven saint masters battle skills struck Jian Chen's weapon and body. Without any sort of resistance. Ji and Chen's light wind sword shattered, filling the air with the pieces of the sword. It began to transform back into the energy of the world and return to the void. Like a kite without an anchor, Ji and Chen's body was blown back 50 meters and fell to the floor ruthlessly. It had taken him another 20 meters before his body had came to a rest after tumbling like a ball in motion. There was already a large hole in the cavity of his chest leaving behind just plain air where his inner organs should be. From head to toe, Ji and Chen's body was covered with blood and not a single part of his body was left untouched by blood. An azure streak of light could be seen as the third elder flew to Ji and Chen's side. He had no plans on going easy on Ji and Chen and immediately stabbed into his heart with his machete running through his chest completely. The light in Jian Chen's eyes began to grow dimmer. He couldn't help but struggle to keep his eyes open before ultimately closing them for good. In the next moment, Jian Chen's consciousness returned to a formless state. His own spirit had already begun to depart from the world and his senses grew dull to the outside world. At the final moments before his spirit would disappear for good, Jian Chen couldn't help but think back to memories of his mother Bai Yunshan, his father Ching Yang Ba, his eldest brother Ching Yang Hu, his eldest sister Ching Yang Minayu, his fellow student Tai Ta from Kargath Academy, and the close friends he had made, Qin Zhao and Ming Dong. This
Is this the feeling of death, mother? I'm sorry, your child was not able to pay respect to you in the end. Eldest brother, second sister, thank you for taking care of me in the past. In the next life, I, Jian Chen, will definitely repay you. Captain Kindle, forgive me. I couldn't fulfill your final wishes. Ming Dong, Qin Zhao, my brothers. This is goodbye. I won't be seeing you again. Jian Chen's mind continued to flash with memory after memory as his state of mind grew even more chaotic. He could tell that his time was growing to an end. Chapter 371, Escape from Calamity The two Jiyid clan elders and the third elder from the Xi family all gathered by Jian Chen's body. Although they had managed to kill Jian Chen, their faces did not seem very healthy. That was because they were still frightened out of their minds from the battle. The frightful amount of energy that Jian Chen managed to release, and used to kill the fourth elder and the eldest brother of the Kai family was quick and simple. In the end, even the three Kai brothers had their saint weapons destroyed. This was a show of power that was far beyond what a sixth cycle heaven saint master could accomplish. This left the three remaining survivors terrified since Jian Chen was only an earth saint master. Jian Chen's final burst of energy came from nowhere. Just how strong was that blast? One of the Jiyid clan members gravely asked. Silently, the third elder began to ponder for a moment. Jian Chen is quite the strange individual. He must have cultivated some sort of secret technique that is unknown to us. It would appear Jian Chen is no ordinary figure. Let us hope that no strong clan supports him. The other Jiyid clan member worriedly spoke. That is unlikely. If Jian Chen truly did have a strong clan secretly supporting him, someone would have come to his rescue when we were chasing him ages ago. It is my guess that Jian Chen was fortunate enough to come across moments where he had gained unbelievable power boosts. The third elder spoke. That's true. We've killed him already, so there is no need to talk about this. Let's take back our ruler armaments then. Most likely, Jian Chen's space ring will hold items of value. If we come across some sort of extraordinary battle skill or miraculous cultivation method, I propose that both of our clans share it in order to avoid a monopoly. The elder from the Jiyid clan spoke. Without any hesitation, the third elder replied, Of course, for now, let us take Jian Chen's space ring and take back what is ours. The third elder didn't wish to take Jian Chen's space ring without the consent of the other two factions since his space ring would also contain the property of the Jiyid clan. After the two elders from the Jiyid clan nodded their heads, the third elder took Jian Chen's space ring. Silently he put up his guard against the other two elders. He carefully began to inspect Jian Chen's space ring. After a while, the third elder's face blanched as he cried out in shock. This is terrible, the ruler armaments aren't inside. What? The two elders cried out in shock as well. Let me see. One of the elders took the space ring from the third elder's hand and began to rifle through it impatiently before his expression became extremely ugly. That scoundrel. The elder cried as he flung the space ring to the ground with a displeased look. The third elder looked at Jian Chen's body with a furious look. What a rogue Jian Chen is. With the ruler armaments hidden, they will be difficult for us to find them. This is troublesome. Where could the ruler armaments be? If they are within a space ring, it has to be within 10 meters for our secret method to sense it. Is it possible that we'll be forced to plead the ancestor to use his energy to search for the missing ruler armaments? The second elder from the Jiyid clan spoke as he glared daggers at Jian Chen. The third elder let out a sigh as he slowly tried to calm himself. Back in Mercenary City, I could still detect that the Seal of Treasure Mountain was located on Jian Chen. It would appear that after leaving Mercenary City, he was able to hide them somewhere. Finding a ring that doesn't emit any energy fluctuations within such a large area would be as hard as scaling the heavens. It appears that we can only report this matter back to the clan. Let them hire a few people to trace Jian Chen's steps to look for it. If they really cannot find it, then the ancestor will have to squander some of his strength to recall his ruler armament. The Jiyid clan elder said. That's the only thing we can do. After the three men had discussed what to do, 
The two elders from the Jaid clan quickly left the area. They had to make sure this information would get back to the clan quickly. After they left, the third elder took the three crippled brothers and the two corpses before leaving as well. Jian Shen's body gradually began to lose heat as his life continued to fade away. Right now, even his powerful soul was already close to disappearing due to all of the serious wounds he had sustained. The third elder had even stabbed through his head with his machete. If this had been anyone else, they would have died long ago. The world began to grow dark, and the surroundings grew quiet. Only a mess remained where Jian Chen had fought, like evidence of how bitter the great fight had been. Suddenly, an azure and violet glow began to drift up from Jian Chen's body. These were the two sword spirits that had resided within Jian Chen's dungeon. They were trying to escape from Jian Chen's body and to the outside world, and within the two glows was a single stone that continued to shine a bright, multicolored spectrum that was dazzling to the eye. It was the multicolored stone that Jian Chen had bought back in Waloran City. The volume of the stone has already shrunk down to the size of a finger. The azure and violet sword spirits and the multicolored stone began to float toward Jian Chen's eyebrows, slowly descending downward. The multicolored stone began to fuse into the space between Jian Chen's eyebrows before disappearing from view. The moment the sword spirit centered Jian Chen's head, an indescribable amount of attraction could be felt, pulling Jian Chen's drifting soul back into his head. Thanks to the sword spirits, Jian Chen's incessantly dissipating soul temporarily stabilized. Afterward, the three began to combine together in Jian Chen's conscious, fusing with Jian Chen's soul. An hour later, a figure could be seen flying through the air. When he passed this area, he suddenly stopped in midair then quickly descended to where Jian Chen's body lay. Giving the body a quick look, the figure couldn't help sharply inhale as he muttered, what a tenacious life force. With even his head stabbed, his soul has yet to fade away. Bah, since you're not dead with such serious injuries, I'll take you home. With that, the man waved his hand and enveloped Jian Chen with a gentle saint force, bringing him along through the air. Chapter 372 a tragic sight. On the second day after Jian Chen's defeat, a tree trunk concealed by several branches in the forest began to shake for a moment before a white-maned winged tiger came crawling out of the tree. Both of its shiny eyes looked around its surroundings before letting out a growl. After looking in every direction and mewling for half the day, the white tiger cub began to sniff the area before heading in the direction of Jian Chen. The tiger cub was extremely young and its paws couldn't support its own weight for an extended period of time. So it could only run for a short amount of time before resting and continuing the pattern. Dot. After an unknown amount of time, Jian Chen's muddled head began to clear up as he tried to open his eyes with difficulty. The very first thing he noticed was a wooden roof. Although it was a bit worn down, it was still quite clean. Suddenly. A wave of pain attacked Jian Chen's head, causing him to cry out in pain. Because of the inexplicable pain in his head, Jian Chen's face grew deathly pale without a hint of blood to be seen. The muscles on his face couldn't help but quiver as he felt the room begin to shake before Jian Chen's head fell to the side and he lost consciousness. Not too long after Jian Chen had fainted, a creaking sound could be heard as the wooden door to the room creaked open and a fat male around the age of 20 years old appeared. The male walked over to Jian Chen's bed, but the moment he saw Jian Chen's sleeping posture, his hand reached to scratch his own head. Strange, I could have sworn I heard a sound. How has he not awoken yet? It's been three days already. With that, the fatty left the room. Dot, for three days straight. The white tiger cub continued to stumble and crawl on the road, climbing across steep mountains and even falling down from them. The white tiger cub didn't even get a scratch on its tender skin. The only change was that its fur was gray in color with the dust. After three days of dangerous traveling, the white tiger cub had finally arrived at the battleground where Ji and Chen and the Heaven Saint Master had fought. Sniffing the area. The tiger cub began to growl out loud with an urgent tone as if it was crying with grief. Running with all of its might toward a large patch of dried blood, the ground even had bits and pieces of Jian Chen's body. Letting out another roar in sadness, 
The tiger cub looked around the area once more before sniffing the bloody patch of ground. Then, with a small nudge of its nose, the tiger cub took a piece of Jian Chin's inner organs and put it into its mouth. Although the tiny part of the inner organ had already withered up, there was still a large concentration of energy within it. After eating the body piece, the white tiger cub began to feel a large amount of energy within its forelimbs. It was as if it had enough energy to support its entire body. There was enough to the point where the tiger cub could feel several sharp fangs starting to grow within its mouth. As the tiger cub continued to eat the remaining parts left behind by Jian Chen, it continued to howl in sadness. Not too long afterward, the entire area had been cleaned up by the tiger cub. By this point, while there was no significant change in the tiger cub's body, its ability to move around had grown significantly. All four of its limbs were sturdy and strong and it no longer had the same difficulty moving anymore nor were its movements awkward. Opening its mouth, the cub took one bite of the nearby dirt before spitting it back out. The originally bloody dirt had returned to its original state as if there had been no blood in the first place. After ten hours, the white tiger cub had fully cleaned up the area so that not a single speck of Jian Chin's blood remained. Not only Jian Chin's blood had been taken, but even the opposing Heaven Saint Masters had been absorbed. For the tiger cub, the amount of energy remaining in their blood was like a tonic for it. After absorbing all of the energy, the white tiger cub had grown even stronger. Even the sharp fangs in its mouth had grown bigger and sharper. Once all of the blood was absorbed, the white tiger cub continued to circle around the area with its nose constantly sniffing. Finally, it broke out into a run that made it look like it was flying as the wings on its back unfolded almost like it was preparing to fly. Dot. A series of pictures began to flow through the chaotic space in Jian Chen's unconscious mind, one after the other in the form of a grotesque gas. Sometimes, he would see a white-haired elder. Sometimes he would see a red cloud that tore through the air itself with its lightning. Sometimes, it was the two azure and violet sword spirits appearing as if they were lovers as they flew through the sky and danced with the metallic song of swords. Occasionally, the figure of a single crane-haired elder could be seen wielding the two azure and violet deity swords as he flew through the air and decimated magical beast after magical beast. At times, the two deity swords fused into one and created chaos throughout the world, destroying both enemies and the world itself. Then, Jian Chen saw the azure and violet deity swords shatter apart into the world and slowly disappear into a mountain range. After an unknown amount of time, Jian Chen opened his eyes once more as he woke up. Immediately, a dizzying sensation began to occur in his head once more but it wasn't as severe as the first wave. Therefore, this time Jian Chen did not fall unconscious. Staring blankly all around him, Jian Chen could see that he was currently resting upon a bed in a wooden house. His back was up against a wooden bed and footprints could still be seen on the floor. The room itself wasn't all that big and was roughly 8 meters wide with very little furniture. Where is this place? Jian Chen began to look around himself with confusion. But when he tried to climb out of the bed, more pain struck and snaked up his body, racking his nerves. The sudden intense pain caused Jian Chen to cry out once more and break out into a cold sweat. His originally healthy red face once again turned pale. Gritting his teeth, Jian Chen lifted his head with difficulty to observe his surroundings. This time, he immediately froze in place as he saw a 30 centimeter hole in his chest, nearly separating his entire body into two in a grotesque shape. There was dried blood everywhere around the wound. This wound would horrify any person. Seeing the situation he was in, a tidal wave of memories began to charge forth into his mind from when he was battling the eight heaven saint masters. Did I not die? Jian Chen's expression was rather dazed. But he soon regained himself as a joyous look overcame him. I didn't die, I really didn't die. Jian Chen couldn't hold in the emotions within himself. As soon as his body began to tremble, the wound in his chest began to act up, causing Jian Chen to grit his teeth together. After a moment, the pain abated, leaving Jian Chen to collapse back onto the bed weakly gasping for breath. Laying there quietly without any energy. 
he began to think about his condition. A clear image of his current state could be seen within his mind. His perspective was a lot stronger than what it was before, but he couldn't feel happy about that just yet, and neither could he feel anything in his current state. Right now, the situation that had happened to him had left him in shock. His current situation was extremely grave. It was practically a total mess. All of his organs were on the verge of failing and even his heart was shattered. But even after such a serious blow, he had not died. But that had not been the most serious thing. The true extent of the damage that Jian Chen suffered was from the light wind sword which broke after years of bitter cultivation. Although his Danshan had not yet disappeared, there were no signs of the sword spirits. Even his saint weapon had been broken without a trace. The Danshan had lost all source of his energy, meaning all of his cultivation had been lost irrevocably. Jian Chen had been utterly dumbfounded. After losing his saint weapon, he had gone from a talented genius of renown to becoming a cripple. This was an incredibly serious blow to him. Could it be? Am I now a cripple? Jian Chen continued to stare at the ceiling with a dazed look. His eyes were filled with an unwillingness. This was because he had far too many things to accomplish still, and in order to accomplish them, he would need a tremendous amount of power. Creak. At that moment, the door suddenly creaked open as a middle-aged man walked through the doors. He was around 40 years old with a steady face and wore clothes that were patched all over. Despite the poor clothing, they did nothing to hide his unordinary air. You're awake. The man stared at Jian Chen. Regaining his senses, Jian Chen looked at the middle-aged man listlessly. I thank you for rescuing me. The man walked toward Jian Chen and stopped at his bedside with a smile. You are truly tenacious in order to take such a fatal blow without dying. If this were anyone else, even a heaven saint master would have died. The man suddenly stopped talking for a moment. The wounds you suffered were horrifying, to say the least. Even your inner organs were crushed. Aside from a high-leveled Heaven Saint Master healing you, it will be incredibly difficult to heal your wounds. Jian Chen was silent as he took in the information. With his Saint weapon destroyed, he had lost all of his martial abilities. Seeing the look of daze in Jian Chen's eyes, the middle-aged man sighed, Kid, think for a moment. Even if you were crippled, you can still live an ordinary life. Although it will be difficult to do anything marvelous, you'll learn to deal with it. I'll go ask my father later for a Radiant Saint pill so that you can heal faster. Chapter 373, Soul Aberration Once the middle-aged man left, the room descended into a quiet calm. The only thing that could be heard was the faint breathing of Jian Chen as he looked up at the ceiling. His saint weapon had been broken. Years of bitter cultivation and hard work, it had all been lost in the most dire situation of his life. This was a blow that was unbearable for him. He wanted to go home. He wanted to enact his revenge upon the Huayun sect. There was just too many things he wanted to do. But to do all of them strength would be needed. Yet now he had degenerated to a cripple. Legends had it that even if a cripple were to reincarnate, it would still take a tremendous amount of time and effort to become an Earth Saint Master. The Jisung Kingdom was at its moment of peril as well, meaning that there was an unknown amount of time before even the Ching Yang clan would no longer be able to hold on. He couldn't try risking the chances of being reincarnated again. At that moment, the doors to the room opened up as a simple-looking fat man around 20 years old came walking in with simple clothing. The fat man walked to Jian Chen's side and looked at the open eyes of Jian Chen with a pleasant smile. Ah, you're finally awake. You've been asleep for several days already. The depressed Jian Chen looked as if he hadn't heard a single word from the fatty and continued to look up toward the ceiling in a daze. Seeing the listless expression on Jian Chen's face, the fatty had a suspicious look on his face. Looking up toward the ceiling, he then waved a hand over Jian Chen's eyes. Hey, are you alright? Why are you looking up there? Is there anything good to look at up there? Jian Chen didn't reply and his pupils hadn't registered any movements either. Scratching at his head, the fatty's eyebrows creased together as he muttered, I heard from father that you were on the verge of death. But your spirit had yet to disappear. Did your soul take some sort of damage and turn you into a vegetable? The fatty extended an arm out to rouse Jian Chen from his stupor. But the moment he saw the frightful wound on Jian Chen's chest, 
his hand froze in midair. With such a wound like this, shaking your body would definitely hurt. No no, I can't do that. Hey, are you okay or not? Can you even hear the words coming out of my mouth? Both of the fatty's eyes stared at Jian Chen's face with an expectant look. Then, Jian Chen's eyes registered something as they swiveled toward the fatty before speaking softly. Who are you? Ha ha, so you finally speak, and you're not a vegetable after all. I was wondering if you had any questions. The fatty beamed before introducing himself. Hello, I am Zayu Taniu, but everyone in the village calls me Little Fatty. So feel free to call me either name. Do you still remember your name? I am Jian Chen. Jian Chen spoke with some difficulty before turning back to look at the ceiling once more. Whoa, so you even know your name still? That's good, you haven't suffered any retardation. The fatty spoke with a pleasant smile as if Jian Chen not becoming a retard was a good thing. The fatty stilled as he looked at the wound on Jian Chen's chest with curiosity. Jian Chen. Just what type of magical beast did you fight in order to gain those wounds? Do you want me to have my dad to bring it back? You don't need to worry, my father is extremely powerful. He'd definitely bring it back and you can have your revenge. Hey, why are you quiet again? Do you not like talking or what? Hey hey, just what's so good looking on the ceiling that makes you stare at it so much? I built this room two years ago, is it not up to your standards or something? Hey. Jian Chen, say something. Do you not like hearing me talk? But Jian Chen didn't say another word and continued to stare at the ceiling in a stupor while the fatty continued to speak into his ear. Danny U. A voice rang out as the previous middle-aged man from before entered the room. Dad, you're back. Why is he looking at the ceiling so much? He doesn't look like he has become an idiot. The fatty began to plead to his father for an answer. With a light voice, the man replied. Danny U, this man has suffered wounds that he has not healed from, let him rest for now. Oh, I get it. Then dad, I'll be leaving now. The fatty said before leaving the room. The middle-aged man walked toward Jian Chin's bed and handed him a round-looking pill. I know you've suffered an unbearable amount of damage, but don't think about it too much for now. Just focus on your recuperation, living is the most important thing. He spoke before inserting the white-colored pill into Jian Chen's mouth. This is a class 8 radiant spirit pill, although it cannot heal your wounds completely, it'll at the very least patch up the hole in your chest. With that, he left the room once more. Jian Chen's entire body was then enveloped by a milky white glow as the radiant saint force within the pill began to leak out. The amount of radiant saint force in the pill was so strong that even Jian Chen at his peak would still barely be able to match up to even a single percent. This was the difference in quality. With Jian Chen's entire body enveloped in radiant saint force, his wounds began to heal at tremendous speeds forcing even the hole in his chest to regenerate with new skin. Not too long after, the hole had been covered over by new skin. At the same time, the internal wounds that Jian Chen had taken were starting to heal. Even the withered skin began to fall off as new tender-looking skin replaced it, revealing a white and sleek shine almost. Not a single scar could be seen on his body. In a little bit, Ji and Chen's body looked as if it was entirely new. Not a single wound could be seen on his body, making him seem almost perfect. Slowly, the radiant saint force began to dissipate from his body. While it looked like Ji and Chen was fully healed on the surface, his internal wounds were still quite severe. The class 8 radiant spirit pill was extremely potent in nature, but there just wasn't enough quantity. Thus, it was not able to fully heal Jian Chen. Despite this, Jian Chen had been moved. His previously listless eyes began to recover with emotions as he felt the changes happen within his body. With a hoarse voice, he muttered, How would I regain my strength? I need to recover all of it, but how? Suddenly, Jian Chen's mind felt a jolt. It was at this moment that he realized that his own mind obtained a few more things and that his own soul had grown stronger. Sensing the changes within his body, Jian Chen was startled. Quickly calming himself down, he closed his eyes and began to envision himself inside his mind. The mindscape of his mind was chaotic in nature. Nothing could be seen clearly, but in the center, 
The azure and violet lights could be seen floating around with the multicolored stone slowly revolving around them. These. These are the sword spirits, how did they get here? What even is this place? Jian Chen's eyes widened in surprise as he looked at the sword spirits. Suddenly, the sword spirits shook as a stream of consciousness flowed from them. All of their knowledge, thoughts, and ideas began to be transmitted into Jian Chen without a single sound by a mysterious manner as if it wanted to be comprehended by Jian Chen. This is my consciousness? Jian Chen realized what the two sword spirits were relaying to him. Soon after, the two sword spirits continued to relay information to Jian Chen via the same mysterious manner. After a while, Jian Chen understood what the circumstances were for him. So I died, but because of the sword spirits, my soul was rescued by them, and now my soul is fused with the two sword spirits. Finally understanding the entire picture, he didn't know if he was happy or worried about what had occurred. After conversing with the sword spirits, he knew that they had fused with his soul to form a special existence. But he didn't know whether or not it was still his soul or if it was now the sword spirits. After pondering it for a while, Jian Chen calmed down. While this result was extremely shocking and hard to believe, his soul had truly merged with the sword spirits while they retained all of their wisdom. While the two had fused, both sides were capable of independent thinking, this was truly a mysterious existence. Just what's going on here, how did I transform into such an odd state? Jian Chen began to mutter to himself. To him, this situation was far too incredible. Another stream of thought came out from the sword spirits once more. I am me, and the sword spirits are the sword spirits. They had only used such a strange method to save and preserve my life. Jian Chen understood the meaning behind the stream of thought. Dot. It felt as if no time had passed within his conscious. It was as if the entire area had gone still, but instead of remaining in this area, Jian Chen began to retreat from his mind after he had received the answers to his questions. The moment Jian Chen had opened his eyes, he took in the sight around him. It was only then that Jian Chen had truly taken notice that his soul had grown inexplicably stronger. He could easily sense anything within a kilometer from his position. It was only because he was depressed at first that he felt as if there was no such change from his soul. Chapter 374 A New Power So my soul has grown even stronger now. Jian Chen thought with surprise. However, he wasn't completely happy. Even after his soul had grown stronger, the only thing that had changed was his ability to perceive things, nothing else. Suddenly, Jian Chen's entire body trembled slightly as he closed his eyes and began to meditate. All sorts of energy from his surroundings was felt through Jian Chen's perception. At this moment, Jian Chen's world had exploded with beautiful colors from every spectrum. He could see just about any color imaginable to the human eye. There was the faint glow of white, the dark color of black, the dull shine of red, the heavy shade of yellow, the rich blue and the lively green. Seeing such a rich world of color, Jian Chen was stunned. These colors were the six elements of the world that he was never able to perceive before. In the past, aside from the radiant saint force or the world energy, he couldn't detect any other element. But now, he could sense the other five elements along with the radiant saint force. With such a sight like this, Jian Chen couldn't help but think that he was dreaming. Could this be what happened when the sword spirits fused with my soul? Jian Chen thought to himself as a way to try and explain just what could cause such a phenomenon like this. Slowly opening his eyes, Jian Chen began to move his right hand, opening and closing his fingers. Jian Chen suddenly realized that the room was rather hot in temperature before a flash of red light began to gather around his hands. In a moment, a faint sea of fire could be seen on it. In disbelief, Jian Chen looked at the miniature sea of flames in his hands with a thunderstruck expression as if he couldn't believe what had just happened. Despite the flames being so close to Jian Chen's hands to the point of contact, he felt no heat at all. It was almost as if the flames were an illusion and not real. Fire. There's a fire. Fire ee -e -e. Suddenly, a frantic shout could be heard from outside the room. Jolting him out of his inner thoughts, 
Jian Chen suddenly realized the room had suddenly burst into flames. In his moment of stupor, the flames gathered in his hand had disappeared. When he was in such a state, he had nearly forgotten just how flammable this room was. Bang! The door to the room was abruptly kicked apart as the simple clothed wearing fatty charged straight into the room with a frantic cry, No no no, there's a fire. Come on, Jian Chen, we have to get out. As if he was flying, the fatty flew toward Jian Chen's bed and carried him out of the room. In a moment, the flames from the room began to soar high into the sky as if devouring the heavens. Put out the fire. Hurry, someone get some water. Several shouts rang through the air as a dozen simple clothed villagers came running forth with buckets of water. Danny Oo, what happened? Just how in the world did a fire start? Suddenly, the father of the fatty appeared out of nowhere as he addressed the flames eating away at the house. Wailing, the fatty looked toward his father with a wretched but innocent face, Dad, I don't know either. Everything was perfect. Just how could the house catch on fire? There wasn't even any light sources anywhere. Hearing that, the father's eyes turned toward Jian Chen with a leveled stare, but he said nothing. The fatty's eyes swiveled toward Jian Chen as if he had come to a conclusion as well. With a gasp, he cried, Dear gods, Jian Chen, don't tell me you're suicidal. Jian Chen stood up by himself with some difficulty. Although his wounds looked like they were healed on the surface, Anyone that looked at him would know that any small movement caused Jian Chen a tremendous amount of pain. I am terribly sorry, this was not intentional. Jian Chen let out a small smile on his face, indicating that his mood had improved a bit from earlier. Oh my my, Jian Chen, I beg you a thousand times over, don't be depressed. You're so young, you can't go kill yourself. You absolutely must continue to live. The fatty fretted as he looked at Jian Chen, thinking that he had done something foolish in his moment of depression. At the sight of the fatty fretting over him, Jian Chen couldn't help but let out a small smile, don't worry, I won't kill myself. After making sure that Jian Chen was not pretending, the father laughed, it seems you've already gotten over it. Quick, put out the fire, faster with the water, everyone move faster. At this moment. The villagers were still bringing bucket after bucket toward the fire in an effort to combat it. Walking forward to stop the villagers, the middle-aged man spoke, There is no need to be so panicked. Please rest for now. Whether it burns or not, we will have to rebuild it anyways. If you say so Uncle Zayumi, then we'll take our time. The villagers immediately stopped their frantic movements and addressed the man with a respectful greeting. I, my poor house, it seems that I have to rebuild it once more. The fatty wailed. At this, Jian Chen felt extremely embarrassed. In such a careless moment, he had accidentally set the house he was in on fire. This made him feel apologetic. I am truly sorry. When I recover, please allow me to help you rebuild. Jian Chen spoke apologetically. The fatty's eyes sparkled on his face as he replied. Okay then, don't you forget it then, when you get better, the two of us will build a house even bigger than the last one. As soon as he finished speaking, the fatty suddenly looked behind him in surprise, Grandfather, Jian Chen, look, my grandfather is back. Turning around slowly, Jian Chen could only see a ho-wielding elder walking from some distance away. He looked rather ordinary like anyone else around his age. A single piece of straw held his hair together and even his clothes were of ordinary make. Both of his legs and the clothes around them were covered with dirt as if he had spent the entire day working the fields and had just returned home like a farmer would. Grandfather, the person father rescued has finally woken up. Let me introduce you. His name is Jian Chen. The fatty cried out in a hurry to greet his grandfather. The elder looked at Jian Chen for a moment before turning back to the fatty with a kindly smile. Little fatty, why is your house on fire? The fatty looked at Jian Chen as well. Jian Chen had wanted to kill himself in his depression, but everything's okay now. He has accepted life. After hearing such a statement, Jian Chen had nearly fell to the ground in shock. This fatty's words held nothing back and were based off of his own judgment. It was as if he was still a child, something that was odd compared to his current age. After he heard the fatty's words, 
The elder began to laugh as he walked up to Jian Chen. With a kindly smile, he spoke, Youngster, those who do not die are bound to come across fortune. Take this spirit pill and eat it. It should heal your inner organs to some degree at the very least. Out of nowhere, the elder took out a pill and gave it to Jian Chen. Seeing the elder take out another pill, the fatty's father had a shocked look on his face. Ha ha, Jian Chen. This is a class 8 spirit pill, an especially rare treasure. It seems that my father has seen fit to give you two. I thank the elder, but this item is far too precious for me to accept. Jian Chen spoke respectfully. He knew just how rare and precious radiant spirit pills were since they were made by radiant saint masters by using their own saint force. A single pill like this was far more than what Jian Chen could accomplish. The elder laughed. This item has little use for me here. It is coincidental that you were in need of it, so take it and recover as soon as you can. After some hesitation, Jian Chen submitted and took the pill from the elder. Carefully putting it away safely, he knew that this pill was far too expensive for him to lose. Little fatty, go and find a room for Jian Chen to rest in. After that, the elder threw down his hoe and headed to another house not too far away. Looking at the retreating back of the elder with a complicated look, Ji and Chen didn't know what to think. Ji and Chen, let's go and find you a new room. The fatty spoke as he walked away. Soon enough, Ji and Chen found himself in another bed. He needed to rest as little fatty had said, so he sat down on the bed and began to sleep. After a while, Ji and Chen managed to calm himself down and tried to control the radiant saint force around him to heal. The class 8 spirit pill was far too precious for him to eat just yet. Just as Ji and Chen began to think, a milky white ball of light began to form around him. Feeling the speed of the radiant saint force gathering, Ji and Chen couldn't help but smile faintly. Perhaps it was because of the mutation to his soul. But he felt that his control over the Radiant Saint Force had grown stronger and stronger. Even after controlling it to such an extent, he didn't feel strained at all. Chapter 375, Recovery of Jian Chen Afterward, Jian Chen began to heal himself using his stronger control over the Radiant Saint Force. Because his internal wounds were even more severe than his external ones. It took Jian Chen an entire day of stubbornly healing himself before he had completely recovered. The following day, Jian Chen walked out of the room to take in the morning air. The little fatty had stayed in the next house over as Jian Chen's neighbor. At this moment, he had just walked out of his room as well only to see Jian Chen right next to him. With a smile, he cried out, Hey, Jian Chen! Are you fully healed now? I thank your grandfather for giving me the pill. I've fully recovered from my wounds now. Jian Chen smiled. Ha ha, that's great. You've finally gained some free time. Let's go. I'll take you on a tour of the village and introduce you to everyone. As he spoke, the fatty led Jian Chen by the arm toward the village without a break in his stride. Not too far away. Ji and Chen could see the grandfather of the fatty walking away with a hoe over his shoulder. Grandfather, are you going to the fields again? Little fatty called out to his grandfather with an enthusiastic greeting. The grandfather laughed as he spoke. That's right, there's still some plants that haven't been planted yet, so I have to hurry. Grandfather, I'm going to take Ji and Chen around the village, I'll be back later to help you. Ha ha, go on then. Take Jian Chen around for a stroll and get to know everyone. This village hasn't seen many outsiders, so you should be able to make a good impression. The grandfather laughed merrily with a kind expression. Jian Chen looked at the grandfather for a moment before silently following the fatty away. The grandfather smiled as he watched Jian Chen walk away. This youngster is quite the strange one. Right by his side, the father of the fatty appeared with a hoe in hand as he spoke. Father, could it be that even you cannot see what this Jian Chen is like? This child is no ordinary one, he is no small frog within the pond. The grandfather let out a sigh before leaving with the hoe still on his shoulder. After listening to his father's evaluation of Jian Chen, the middle-aged man had a thunderstruck expression. Looking at Jian Chen's back, he said nothing and instead followed his father toward the fields, on the road. The fatty continued to give Jian Chen some information about the village, 
like saying that it was within the valley of longevity. There were mountains everywhere with precipitous peaks that were hard to climb. The only way into this valley was a single road that twisted about more than a snake. This village had over a hundred families living within it totaling up to 600 people in all. Since they were cut off from the outside world, they could only rely on themselves to support their families. The entire village relied on Fatty's father to go out and bring them essentials from the world every so often, so they themselves never left. That was also due to the fact that the valley was exceptionally deep and connected to the biggest mountain range in the continent, the Cross Mountains. The valley was also home to thousands of strong magical beasts. The distance from this place to the outside world was well over a thousand kilometers and was fraught with danger. Even if one had nine lives, if one wanted to leave, it would be highly unlikely that they would be able to. Little Fatty, if your father is able to reach the outside world, then your father must be a truly amazing person. Jian Chen commented. Of course. My father is super amazing. Not only does he teach the entire village how to cultivate, but he'll occasionally bring back a super strong magical beast for the village. Because of this, the entire village worships my father. The fatty said proudly. Since your father is so amazing, then your grandfather must be as well, correct? Jian Chen asked. That, I don't know, but I don't think my grandfather is all that strong. If he doesn't go fishing, then he's working the fields. I've never seen him bring home any magical beast, but he is the village elder where even my father listens to him. Have you ever seen the outside world? Nope. The fatty shook his head, I've lived my entire life in this village without ever going outside, but I've heard from my dad that the outside world is extremely large and wonderful. One time my father had planned on taking me outside, but my grandfather had stopped him and gave him a scolding. He said that I wasn't suited for the outside world, and so after that, my father never once let me out of the village. Suddenly, the fatty's eyes began to shine as he stared at Jian Chen. Jian Chen, aren't you from the outside world? How is it? Are the people as big and great as my dad says? Come on, tell me. Is the outside world as my dad says? Jian Chen nodded his head. Correct, the outside world is extremely vast, far bigger than you could possibly imagine. However, it is especially cruel out there. One must be strong in order to survive. Little fatty, do you wish to see the outside world? Of course, I spend every day hoping that I can see the outside world just once to see what it's like. Suddenly, the fatty looked at Jian Chen with a serious expression. Jian Chen. You can't tell my grandfather or he'll grow extremely angry. Jian Chen returned the look, little fatty, if you truly wish to see the outside world, you'll first have to convince your grandfather. No no, I can't. My grandfather's anger is something you definitely don't want to see. Although my grandfather is usually kind, when he gets angry, even my father becomes afraid. The fatty instantly turned nervous as he thought about his grandfather. Fine then. I promise I won't say a word. Seeing how nervous the fatty became, Jian Chen couldn't help but worry for him. The fatty let out a sigh in relief. Jian Chen, you're a nice guy. If you were my grandfather, that'd be great. That way, I'd be able to see what it's like outside. At this, Jian Chen had nearly stumbled to the ground. Afterward, the fatty brought Jian Chen around the entire village and introduced him to many different people. Among the villagers, there were plenty of pretty little women that were still quite plain compared the ones Jian Chen had seen in the outside world. But when they saw Jian Chen's handsome and determined face, many of the women instantly grew as still as a deer as their faces began to turn red. Jian Chen's face was a natural weapon to any women under the heavens. This held especially true for all of the valley women. After walking around the entire village, Jian Chen finally found an excuse to detach from the fatty and headed for the outskirts of the village by himself. In a short moment, Jian Chen had passed by several roads and arrived at a mountain range. Right now, he had to make sure that he fully understood the situation his body was in. He had a feeling that even with his saint weapon broken, it was not the end of the world just yet. Arriving at a small hill, Jian Chen sat down with a tranquil look as he began to meditate. Suddenly, 
a picture of the surrounding kilometer began to appear within his mind, where not even the impossible spots in one's vision were overlooked. By this point, there was nothing that was a secret to Jian Chen, even the insects crawling on the ground a hundred meters away could be seen by Jian Chen. The Azulet Sword Laws began to form within Jian Chen's mind as he figured that this was the work of being omnipresence. Jian Chen continued to work at this omnipresence, increasing his range from a kilometer to two kilometers, three kilometers, four kilometers, five kilometers, eight kilometers, dot, ten kilometers. Jian Chen's omnipresence had somehow managed to reach ten kilometers, but this was the farthest he could go. By this point, Ji and Chen could see anything within that range without anything escaping his senses. Not even a single blade of grass was left uncomprehended by him. Suddenly, Ji and Chen lifted up both arms, causing the earth elements in the world to gather near him. Afterward, a large earthen wall began to form by Ji and Chen's side and encased him inside. Then, the dirt began to compress so much that by the end, it had somehow managed to turn into solid stone. Then. The entire area began to soar in temperature as a sea of fire appeared as well. Scoring the entire sky, the plants beneath Ji and Chen's feet began to wither as several trees began to burn. The wind began to pick up in speed and blew sand everywhere, forming a dust storm. Countless of plants were uprooted, and combined with the burning trees, the fire grew extremely large in scale. Right after, the energy within the world began to ripple as a blue-colored light blanketed the entire forest before finally forming a large pool of water above. With a torrential downpour, the fire within the forest had been extinguished. Following the downpour, the sunlight began to grow darker as the previously daytime light turned to night. No matter where one went within a kilometer, there was only a blanket of shadows that made it hard to see even one's hand in front of their faces. But even then, the shadows began to grow smaller in scale from a kilometer to 500 meters, shrinking once more to 20 meters before finally transforming into a single black-colored sword that floated right in front of Jian Chen. With a point of his finger, the sword moved straight through the air and pierced through hundreds of trees before disappearing into the world. And as soon as the black-colored sword shot through a tree, the tree would instantly begin to wither away. The energy of darkness had a strong rotting nature. Slowly sitting back down, Jian Chen's entire heart was in turmoil. After his soul had fused with the sword spirits, he had managed to gain a whole new set of abilities. Now, he was fully capable of controlling any of the six elements within the world and could bend them to his will. Then, Jian Chen's hand began to rise up as a faint glow of azure and violet sword she extended from his fingertips.